It's the Bob and Tom Show. We're joined by uh, the legendary Joe Walsh on the phone. Joe, good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? We're great. And you? Wait a minute. Is Bob there? I'm here right here, Joe. Because last time I called, you were so impressed you went on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what if you were to get in your car right now, what kind of what, what are you listening to? Oh, uh, jeez. I don't really. I just turn on the radio and whatever I hear is what it is. I, a lot of old stuff. I'm going through a lot of old stuff. Yeah. Uh, classic rock stuff. And that's kind of a big wasteland out there. Mm -hmm. I don't hear a whole lot that uh, that I can make it all the way to the end of the, of the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some good stuff out there. <laughs> Joe, when I read a funny thing about the Rolling Stones when they were setting up their tour. They had to have one of the roadies in the back with a stack of their albums, and they'd, they'd come upon a song title, and they'd had to kind of relearn it. Yeah. I mean, when you guys are with the Eagles, did you have to sit down and go, that was a great song, but how did we do it then? And do yeah, it? exactly. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know we, you know, just because you wrote it don't mean you can play it. That's true. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. I find that a lot. Yeah, we dusted off James Dean, and that oh, that's yeah. a great song. I love that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. It, it rocks pretty good, but that was uh, pre-Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to go learn Bernie Ledden's parts. Wow. And boy, I see why they replaced him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe. That's, that's not nice. <laughs> no, that's very, not very nice. But, but, wow. Yes. Wow. Now, do, you, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you have any of your old, old, old guitars, your first ones that are... You know, I don't have very many. I think I've got a Les Paul that I started out with. Mm -hmm. I uh, sure wish I did. I've gone back and, and got bought some equipment like I used to have. Did it get stolen on the road or just lost? or? Oh, just lost in the wayside. You know, I, I don't remember a whole... There's a couple years there that are that are just a mystery to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking to Ozzy yeah. about two weeks ago. And, you know, James King and, and his band, we played a whole bunch of gigs, and neither of us remember anything. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Those were the days. Huh? Wow. We, know we played together because we have the posters. <laughs> I know we did. That's the line of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I know we did. We had, they printed posters. Dun, 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 dun. The fabulous Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. One of the oddest album titles. I still don't know what it means. Perhaps you could help. The smoker you drink, the player you get. Yes, what does that mean? I mean, Joe is still drinking. Okay. <laughs> hey, good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy with the actual leopard uh, skin scarf hanging around her neck. That's right. Killed, Killed that a couple weeks ago and yep. tanned it. Sure did. Made a scarf. DIY taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> there's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. Hey, man. There's uh, Josh Arnold. Hey. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. I'm Chick. Here's Tom. Uh, my uh, kids at a summer camp are doing some DIY taxidermy. Is really? That, is that right? Yeah. yeah were they just what? going rogue and doing it on their own? Or they was were it... uh, doing a little taxidermy on a squirrel. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh -huh. Sure. You know, Dahmer did that kind oh of thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, they were, they were they with proper instruction. That's, uh, that's odd. Okay, that's very that's odd. really, really, really strange. Well, they were tanning a squirrel hide. It was, you know, whatever you do. It was it, a tanning it, bed? It's... It's still weird. Still weird. You know, Pat, you don't use a tanning bed for that. <laughs> thanks, 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 no, for, no, no. thanks for participating in today's show. No, no, don't. Don't attack Pat. This is all odd, and you're acting like it's normal. What, it's so not. they skinned a, they caught a squirrel, killed it, skinned a squirrel, and now they're tanning their hide? I'm not sure. I think the squirrel was uh, uh, found, if you will. Okay. I think there's perhaps a tread mark somewhere, <laughs> but then it's so, always. So wait, this is a camp, organized camp. Kids yeah, go uh -huh. there. Absolutely, yeah. So is this an organized activity, or did they just play it by ear when they found the <laughs> squirrel? I think the latter. They just they they, they 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 learn about doing things outdoors. They learn about knives and. Is it me or does this that sound is odd? Really is odd. Very, very unusual. Yes. Very. That's just one of the skills. They they learn how to uh, whittle and uh, 
car. <laughs> <laughs> ever if they have to ever go to the general store at any point? <laughs> do they learn to play checkers too? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, that might be something they do in a rainy day. It's just a bit so. I think it's about being away from phones and electronics know, and doing and stuff. Don't hide behind that. Uh, I know that that you'll find this hard to believe that there are some parents. Yeah. Some parents who would be upset that if they sent their kids to a camp and they end up tanning a squirrel's hide. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, some parents don't uh, can't admit the fact that they're eating meat or that it's important, so, so it's the important parents, to have hunting and the parents are wrong in this case. There's a lot of things there are a lot of things out there that people don't know about that they're afraid of and they're they just don't get. <laughs> I, I would I would think a lot of the kids would recoil. Yes. yes. I right? I didn't want to chop up a, a frog. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, then back in the day, then you'd be dead. Yeah, but th that's not the point. Yes, Tom. it is the point. No, the, it's the not. The point is we've become a pussified nation. No, it's People not. People think that food comes from things wrapped in plastic. And, Bending uh, children's brains to think it's okay to pick up dead animals and skin them alive, <laughs> if you they're, will. They're, they're, they're dead. They're, they're, they're dead. <laughs> Your sentence doesn't even make sense. Uh, this is wrong, and they should stop it. And if the state doesn't step in, I'm starting. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting. Yeah, I mean, I'm we need boy, the state, to, the state to step into more things in our culture. They're not in deep enough. This doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, by the way, uh, we're missing a step. Uh, we have a lot to mm -hmm. get to today. Coming up, uh, comedians Al Jackson and Bill Burr will be our guest. Also, we're going to feature a segment of our interview with Peter Frampton from yesterday's show. In case you missed it, it was great talking with Mr. Frampton, nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can vote, by the way, uh, if you go to the Rock and Roll Hall's uh, website. Rockhall.com slash vote. All right. We had a great time talking to Mr. Frampton. Back on tour, by the way, so that, that's great news. Um, also, an update on a story from yesterday. Um, I don't know if you remember this, um, Wendy's yeah, I have an, uh, yeah. CEO. Do you have that yeah, story? Yeah, I sure do. He uh, stepped on his... Uh... A social media <laughs> backlash this week to media reports that said fast food chain Wendy's had planned to increase menu prices during busiest hours. Well, customers may be willing to pay more for a hotel room during peak vacation times, but not a hamburger. So it looks like they won't be doing that. They clarified their intentions. Yeah, they this They guy. said they planned to test dynamic pricing that benefited you, not surge pricing that would charge more. So they're saying in slower times, wow. they would l lower prices. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. We, we all said, terrible idea. Yeah. This will never work. Um, it's all uh, the way you phrase it, though. Dy yeah. Dy it, no, no, it's going to be dynamic yeah. pricing. Yeah. Well, what they're going to do now, what they're saying is they're going to lower prices right. during slower hours. Yes. And well, so who had it wrong? Did the media have it I wrong think initially? That we all jumped on it because no. they surge pricing. When you say surge pricing, I think we had it right means, in Wendy's panic. <laughs> yeah. That means that they're going to raise prices during peak hours. Hmm. During surge. a conference call, here's what it says During a conference call, Wendy's CEO, Kirk Tanner, said the burger chain will start testing surge pricing. Yeah. Everyone said, oh, so you're raising prices. Oh, so everyone said you're raising prices, but he didn't mean that. Apparently. Uh, well. Okay. And that's not so clear. Eh, I wouldn't be shocked if the media jumped on it before they actually had all the facts. No, did he mean it? And then he got <laughs> such backlash that he backed off? Or We all said I, That's what the media's going to say, yeah. So the media's going to Probably. You're part of the media. No, I'm not. I'm an entertainer. Okay. And no, I, when so does just, start? you know, none of you are part of the media either. We are, uh, I beg We are part. entertainers. I want to be a part of the media. I want to help uh, fashion people's <laughs> opinions. I want to, I want to, I'm a nonstop liar. Ask anybody. I, I am built for the media. You are an influencer. Uh, yes. You are. I don't know you're if you're I am or not. You're, you're influencing men to wear that get up you've got on right now. <laughs> it's a classic Adidas jacket. What's it's my with you? Sopranos flight jacket. I, was, I can see Polly getting on a plane yeah. in this. <laughs> yeah, he would for sure. Are you wearing the matching track pants? I am not, although oh. they are on order. Great. Yeah. The original uh, the original uh, release from Wendy's said uh, the, uh, the strategy is taken hold with ride-sharing companies and ticket sellers, yeah, yeah, of uh, raising prices during they, they call it surge, uh, surge pricing. I, I think the thing we're missing is that Wendy's has a great cheeseburger and yes, French fries and a frosty. Man, you d you dunk all your food in the frosty. <laughs> <over, right? laughs> you Don't get chilly. You sure do. You dunk all it all and, and, and I, right I, down the hatch. And I believe Good Josh chili. is the one yesterday who said, if if this changes and you're in line and the guy in front of you gets the baconator. And it's a buck less, you're going to be pissed. Yeah, well, what the heck happened here? Well, the problem is this shouldn't have gotten this far. 
uh, just, we shouldn't know anything about this. They should have just kept their mouths shut. Yeah. That's, the way, <laughs> that's the way corporate America works. Now they're saying... How many people would notice? It says, exactly. it says Wendy's issued a statement Tuesday saying it's investing $20 million in high-tech digital menu boards that will have the capability to update prices in real time, meaning they can drop them when it's not crowded. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. They should have just said nothing, as you say. Why don't they just bring back the salad bar at Wendy's and go about their day? They had a because good that was a huge disaster. I love the I salad. Like the you, salad you, bar. you and four other people in America. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, yeah. You br you come back with a big restaurant, a nice salad bar, <laughs> macaroni salad, potato salad. Yeah, a lot of waste. A little French dressing in the ranch. You know dressing. what I hate about yeah. salad bars? I've got uh, two. I've got two words for you. Uh huh. Sneeze shield. Uh, I remember finding out what it was for. <laughs> I couldn't believe well, like, it. Oh, like uh, that. This Thousand Island tastes a little salty. Oh, that's the snot oh, from the uh, okay. the booger laden moron sitting three tables over. I say uh, thank goodness for the sneeze shield. Absolutely. But the fact that they needed it. Yeah. As you've often said, the, the only reason they have it is because something happened. Sure. <laughs> you know, Burger Chef used to have that when there were Burger Chefs. That you could load uh, the works bar. Yes. Mm. You could load up with pickles and ketchup. Oh, kind of like uh, Fuddruckers? Yep. Uh, yeah. I beg your pardon? Fuddruckers. I called you a Fuddrucker. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Are they all gone? No, there's someone in there's yeah. one in an airport somewhere. Around somewhere. Oh, yeah, there, there was yeah. one around here and I remember it's a great name. I mean, it was the most hostile and it, remember they had the yes. signs. No photography. Yeah. Like what the <laughs> hell? No <laughs> photography. Yes. Secret operation. They had huge God knows what really happened. This is how we could no, have am I right? <laughs> yeah. Remember that? They had it was over there. They had huge these huge that, signs. I, I wonder what happened. Are you sure that All wasn't a place that. called Flaky Jake's that there was no photography? Oh, it, oh, it, oh the, then it makes sense that it was Flaky Jake's. Well, Flaky Jake's had a, an amazing secret recipe, man. And, no. Oh, no kidding. Oh, those were good burgers, too. Mm. Yeah, there was a place up that. here that tried this thing with all these exotic ketchups, and that bombed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you love a loser, don't you? Well, that place. <laughs> he loves movies that flop. He loves that people place, losing money. Chris, yeah, if you ever <laughs> went there, it's now a Verde. But before that, oh. it was a place where if you'd ordered a, a salad. Yes. They wouldn't bring your salad. They, everything had to come at the same time. So you'd be like, I could I have my salad and then I'll take my burger. No. That was their big thing. And Oh, I know what you're talking. Yeah, they yeah. were so hostile to that. That thing bombed so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they had all these rules. Hey, yeah, look, it's, so it's, 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 a, it's a burger place. Calm down. Can I have my salad before my burger? Here's no. What, here's what really happened. <laughs> Tom went in there. He tried to he tried to start up a conversation with the, the server mm -hmm. like he always does. Yes. The server was busy, couldn't talk to him, and now he's making up all these stories. <laughs> oh, my well, you yeah, had to eat everything at the same time <laughs> yeah. and in order. You, did you ever go there? I yeah. went there once. Yeah, that's you, that's the thing. People went there once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, it, was a place. it was some big chef's place, uh, it wasn't was, yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see you eating in Flaky Jake's, it, it though. It was way too cash for you. No, it was good. I did. You had to go up and, and, and no, put stuff on your wasn't burger. Wasn't that the place? Yeah. Yeah. Who had the sign saying, and huge sign saying no photography? I think it was Flaky Jake's. Mm -hmm. Fuddruckers. Or Hooters. Hooters has no photography, right? Don't they? What? If they don't, yeah. it would make sense that they would. Yeah. Hey, please yeah. don't take pictures of our waitresses. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You can take pictures of their asses and their yeah. Yeah. boobs. That seems a little hostile to me. <laughs> it's a free country, for God's sake. I... Anyway, so Wendy's has backed off their yeah. whole surge pricing thing because they, they stepped on their collective. Me? Yeah. But because, you know, Wendy's is famous because, as, as I've said yesterday, uh, they don't cut corners. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seven times. This is day two of talking about Wendy's so we can tell that joke. <laughs> See, the burgers are square and their buns are round. Uh -huh. I, uh, Talk, and that's a great idea. And you know what else is a great idea? What? Well, Getting peace make, of make, mind. They need to have square buns. <laughs> peace of mind for your family. That's right. Simply safe. The do-it-yourself, design-it-yourself home security system, and they have square buns. That's right. No, but Simply they don't safe. cut corners. And they don't cut corners. They're trusted by the experts. Simply safe. Named best home security system of 2024 by U.S. News and World Report. Offering everything you need for whole home protection. HD cameras for inside and out. Advanced motion sensors and entry sensors. As well as hazard sensors for stuff like fires. Flooding and frozen pipes. Simply safe system, easy to set up yourself, no special tools or know how required. Let's put it this way I did it. But if you prefer, you can get one of their expert technicians to install it for you. And for Bob and Tom Show listeners, we've got a special deal. Order now to get 20% off 
any new Simply Safe system with fast protect monitoring by visiting simplysafetom.com. It's 20% off. Just go to simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I think we have a fight brewing between Ace and Pat. Uh oh. Uh, we'll okay. go over that when we come okay. back. I'm just reading the CEO's new statement from Wendy's. Oh. He said, due to the frosty reception <laughs> of, of our breast release yesterday. <laughs> what do you... I need you and I to sit down and spend an hour, I'm maybe so, 90 minutes, isn't, isn't you, the you frosty explaining place? to me they do what the, you think is funny. They do the frosty, right? Due to the frosty yeah. reception we received, it seems we're in quite a pickle. And the next time we hope to hit a double, possibly a triple. Mm. And, and uh, Mr. Griswold's idea of square buns with square burgers is great because <laughs> our burgers are great and we do not cut corners. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. At the end of my show, sometimes people will, you know, shout out a request or something like that, which is very flattering. And, uh, you know, you get to do some bit that you haven't done in a long time. And it's mm -hmm. kind of fun sometimes to knock the dust off something that you haven't done and do it again, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's, I, uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I recently had somebody yell, uh, hooked on phonics, which I hadn't <laughs> done in a long time. Uh -huh. And uh, it's fun to go, oh, man, I haven't done this bit like in, you know, years. And uh that, that was the bit from the, the commercial. Do you remember the Hooked on Phonics sure. girl? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the little girl with the braces. Hooked on Phonics work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I always wondered, what if she applied what she learned and she couldn't get the commercial right, you know? Who get on Phonics? <laughs> work it for me. Who get on Phonics? Work it. <laughs> okay, cut. <laughs> we're not going to move a lot of tapes like this. <laughs> no, we're not. No. I'm telling you. <laughs> Brian Regan. Race fans, it's May, and you're out at the track. You're hot and thirsty. If you don't get some relief quick, just like those Indy cars, your body's going to overheat. That's why you need the cool, refreshing blast of body fuel. It's like an overhaul for your body in a 12-ounce can. Just one drink and you'll be refueled and ready for anything your busy lifestyle demands. Excuse me, sir. You look hot and thirsty. <laughs> Boy, I sure am. I got my two kids with me and I forgot the cooler in the car. God, it's got to be 100 degrees out here. I can sure go for a cold drink of water. Water? You don't want water. You want something that'll replenish all the fluids you've lost. You need the overhaul for your body in a 12-ounce can. You need body fuel. Body fuel? Uh, I never heard of it. That's because it's new. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this tastes like motor oil. Well, there is some motor oil in there. And some transmission fluid, gasoline, and even a little engine coolant. Engine coolant? <laughs> I can't see. Well, of course you can't see. That's the power of body on your system, making it just like brand new. What do you think of body fuel? Are you trying to kill me? Hey, what's that fizzing noise? Ah, that's a little battery ant. Sure, it'll keep your body running smooth and efficient. How do you like the sporty racing look of the package? I can't see. I can't see anything. Wow, well, it's, very, it's very sporty. Don't worry. Preliminary testing shows that the blindness is only a temporary sign. <laughs> anyway, how about that refreshing, cool, clear taste? Come here. I'm going to sue you bastards. Come here. Where are you? I can't see anything. Body fuel. If you're so thirsty, you could die. Try one of Body Fuel's three delicious flavors. Original lemon lime, iced tea, or diesel. I, I can't I can't feel my tongue. My gums are bleeding. My gums are bleeding. Body Fuel. From the people who brought you Thirspiration Plus. It's the health drink for those on the run. Go out and pick up some Body Fuel today. At a supermarket or auto parts store near you. Come here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm in Bob and Tom's studios. April Macy was on Bob and Tom today, and I probably know more about what turns her on than anybody I know of. She's trying to play hard to. G oh, Eureka! I swear to God, she is fire ass hot. Hi. Remember me? I do, unfortunately. I yeah, do. don't don't worry about that restraining order because that's expired now. But uh, you're famous, 
you've been on TV before, and I sure I'm have. sure you're used to the porcarazzi coming in taking pictures. I swear to God, you are. <laughs> oh, please don't say porcarazzi. Porcarazzi. <laughs> you don't carry pepper spray anymore, do you? Because the it's last it's so uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Your porcarazzi. Well, the last stuff you you carried stung a little bit, but you are from head to toe. Okay, you want my pager number, maybe? Is that something you might uh, perhaps be interested in? Pretty lonely. Okay. Uh, I tried to hit you up on Kristen Mingle, but your profile picture didn't really oh. reply to what I had, so. Yeah, yeah, you can go on uh, J-Date if you'd like to see me. Go on J-Date? <laughs> okay, I swear to God I will. I know what the J stands for. I had tennis elbow doing that all through high school. I'll see you, April. Bye. Sexy thing. Oh, my God. That because everybody's going to have their own shoe and selling shoes and telling these kids to buy shoes. Because honestly, I don't care what kind of shoe an athlete wears, mm. and neither should you. My question is, what kind of shoe does a black surgeon or lawyer wear? <laughs> <laughs> what is Johnny Cochran wearing? That should be the commercial. Mm. Uh -huh. When you can get a brother off a double homicide, the whole world knows he's guilty of. Uh -huh. That's a bad shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us in the studio, comedian Mark Eubanks. Did you go to college down in... Uh... I went to college in uh, University of West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Oh, really? I was a mountaineer. Hmm. Well, why would someone from Florida go to college in West Virginia? Uh, because you didn't have to be real smart to get into school there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, showing up got you that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh. Valedictorian was a 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> On the breathalyzer. <laughs> Sunshine. Bob and Tom. Go. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're going to talk about love during the sports cast. Are we? True love. Romantic oh, I like love. That. Well, we Married a, love. We had a story yesterday during the Allie Breen sexy time segment. About? Remember the one about the, uh, the woman whose parents got divorced and mm. she was talking to her mother and her mother said, yeah. I left him. I could tell he was cheating on me because... I counted the, his Viagra. I counted the Viagra pills, and then the woman who wrote said, actually, I had taken them. Uh, Hello. <clears throat> Yikes. She was giving them to her college boyfriends. Yikes. Shouldn't you ask your doctor about that, that they even work for ladies? I mean, I've heard they do, but that's just... I think we don't know that she gave yeah. them to her college boyfriends. Oh, uh, I think she did. All right. That's fair. Yeah, she, Translation. She, oh, I know she did. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't get enough. So if you were a guy in college and your girlfriend <laughs> offered you a Viagra, would you take it? I don't think so. Did yeah. you live in the dorm at Columbia? Yeah. Well, very. Did you have uh, Did you have a roommate? Did you uh, use uh, three of them? Did you use a, a sock or a tie on the doorknob or any sort of you had a method? Uh, any sort of signal? That, no, that was the classic code. Yeah. Uh, no, we did not. But the, the classic code, I think, in in fifties fraternities was if there was a tie on the door, it meant that uh, somehow you were in there doing something. Did you? Perhaps with a co-ed. Did you ever? Uh, or you know, love is love. But uh, uh, did yeah, you, that, that's you know something that's true, especially where I went to college. Yeah. Did you? Uh, <laughs> did you have uh, ever had the occasion to uh, be interrupted uh, during? Interrupted? No. But coitus? Uh, no. But I did. <laughs> Uh, I better be careful. Uh, over the course of four years, I had a variety of roommates. I'll put it that way. And did you interrupt them? Um, no, but at one point I was awakened by some activity. Uh, mm. Oh, it was solo activity, right? No, no, no. Oh. No, it would, it, no, that wouldn't be as funny. Were you in a bunk bed situation? No, 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 no. He was would. underneath you? No, playing with no, himself? no, 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 no. Was, no. That happened to me. There was a bed across the room, and um, mm, they were doing this it? particular person had brought... Somebody oh, was playing with themselves in front of Christy. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no, no one no, playing. Would you stop it? There's no one playing with themselves here. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's is, another uh, person involved. Yeah, this is the old in out. Yeah, in college, that and was I, kind of. All a I'm thing. going to say is, wow, those beds are squeaky. <laughs> hmm. And it was all I could do not to say, could you possibly finish? <laughs> oh. <laughs> So you didn't play with yourself you while imagine. they were doing that. There was no one play. I th I thought that, I think I would have played with myself. I thought in your <laughs> dorm, you uh, there was a guy who could self fillet. What? Yes. Oh. I remember you telling me this. It mm. was amazing. You said no. 
<laughs> That's a movie you were watching. You, you you can't remember reality, but you remember things that were never said. No, no, no. Could we move on? Do we have anything else to yes, talk about? Yes, with you. Uh, Tom, uh, you had mentioned... <laughs> that your your daughters in camp were <laughs> ripping animals apart. Yeah, skinning no skinning squirrels and tanning Dissecting the leather them. at yeah, a they, camp. They, they were. And how old are they? Seven, eight. Uh, yeah. At the time, uh, seven and ten. Oh my God. Well, Man. Sky Guy writes in. He says, uh, "Dear Tom and the disappointments." <laughs> <laughs> I've never been more upset with the show. You've made me agree with Tom. The camp idea of getting these kids' hands dirty is amazing. <laughs> I went to a church camp in the South, comma? That's what it says. <laughs> He's dangling there, I think. Uh, no, no, it's written C-O-M-M-A. What do you think South, comma is? Probably meant oh, South I don't Carolina. Know. Okay. Oh, yeah, typo. That's be All right. Oh, you know what? I think uh, he actually, it was speak to text, and it says. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. I went to the church <laughs> camp in the South, comma, and we were taught how to. Uh, right. But that would be a comma splice. You don't have a comma and the word and. And we were taught how. To, uh, how to bring... Oh, yeah, this is definitely talk to text. Sorry. Do you want me to read this? Shut up. <laughs> to uh, wring a chicken's neck and spin the okay. body until the head popped off. Oh. That's, okay. That's this, what these children learned at camp. This can't This can't be taught at camp. Yes, they need it can. to stop you guys, this. You guys would all be dead You're psychologically 200 years ago. First of all, there'd be no TV. Hurting. <gasps> no! What? You'd that? be, your teeth would all be falling out. And if you wanted to eat, you had to go get your food. You want We need to have some respect. We have to have respect yeah. for people that hunt and kill the herd. Well, of and course. <laughs> and but yes. I can skin a buck. I can run a trout line. What is, wait a minute. Are you, are you Hank Williams Jr.? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can watch a TV program about a guy skinning a buck and running the trout line. <laughs> yeah. I have plucked a chicken. You have plucked a chicken. I beg your pardon? Well, thank you, Ace. Me. Did you I kill it? I thought there was a guy in your dorm room plucking chickens every night. Where did you get this? No, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I heard he could pluck his own chicken. <laughs> oh. That's what I heard. Oh, so my God. Anyway, this guy says uh, it was good to be disconnected. Of course. Nobody's yeah, arguing it's good that. To go to, no, uh, yes, I am arguing that. No, oh, you, oh. I, you uh, go to camp. You don't have a, you don't have a cell phone. <laughs> you don't have a computer. They, they okay, go canoeing and they that. go swimming. and they, the, the squirrel thing is a little yes, much. The chicken thing is even worse. Well, of course. Yeah, yes. that's, that's not going to happen. They're killing these. things, That's Tom. not going to happen these what are you, days. What are you having for lunch? I, that doesn't enter into Walden. the psychological... Killing chickens at camp also kind of doesn't make sense. No. How often are you on a hike and, oh, hey, grab that chicken real quick. <laughs> you know something? Got a been, ton of chickens in the woods. For a you ever been around chickens? Yeah. Well, sure, but oh, not in the woods animals. is what I'm saying. Well, if you were and you were hungry, and, uh, <laughs> you'd be chasing one of those chickens. and uh, taking a nice hike. I, probably I, get, get a good charge as you killed them going, oh, oh, oh I can't wait to roast you and eat you. Well, there's no doubt about that if you were starving. I hope I run into a mountain lion so I can wring its neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Chickens aren't in the woods because they don't hap- live long What happened to, uh, to uh, ghost stories and, and, yeah. s- and spores? And, and, and making and, uh, God's guitars. eyes. Come yes, on. man, crafts. Yes. Making your own pillow to sail. That's part of camp also. Okay. Sailing, swimming. Killing. uh, If necessary, (laughs) maybe. Tanning the skin. Learning about the source of our food. Wearing suits of human skin. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I... Camp for at least one... For at least one camper, it will lead to that. Okay, most of us do not eat squirrel, first of all. It's not, so, the, it's not about eating. It's got to be gamey, right? Uh, yeah. it's, it's not really about eating squirrels. It's about uh, d- just getting back to basics and understanding where things come from. The average person thinks that uh, I don't, f- uh, food comes from, a, dri- from no, a drive-through. So what they do with these squirrel hides? Did they make a hat out of them? or They were just kind of laying they around. They threw them away. Do you have them at home? Uh, no, I did not ask. I did not take the squirrel hide home. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's great, honey. Leave that here. It no, wasn't no. done. That I was, put that on the ground. That, yeah. It wasn't done. Get there's a whole the there's trunk. a whole process. It I takes need time. you to know uh, how we get chickens in the grocery store, but you leave that skin. Well, I just there. signed the girls up for that camp again. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And not to teach them anything, so that you and uh, your your lady have a little have a couple <laughs> weeks of peace. To be honest, <laughs> I'll get some uh, get that bail bonds. And then, ready, by the way, then. and then I also signed them up for a musical camp. Oh, good! Like a high school musical, like a yeah, like, they'll love that. Yeah, yeah that. They're so, so they're they're doing the one, you know, the, the now is that, that where they, they skin Stephen Sondheim <laughs> for the final? Is that, is that what happens on that one? <laughs> well, uh, perhaps they'll be doing one of uh, Sondheim's more uh, uh, violent musicals. I think 
you're fully aware. Assassins of. or... Yeah, Assassins is a um, <laughs> you know, The one where they eat all the people, that one. Yeah. Sweetie Todd. Yeah, Sweetie yeah that's Todd. nice. Okay. Do your kids ever ask just to stay home? <laughs> well, I, Dad, can I have some Use time to pool myself, yeah. please? They have a nice pool now. You know, please. hey, can we just stay home? <laughs> have a nice house here. Maybe we should live in it for yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you should get on... You should get on top of this. Uh, some people are, are in the wintertime, they freeze their pools so the kids can ice skate. Is that? Uh, wow. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> no, I, I'm making all that up. I'm trying, I'm trying to get you to do it. So when you freeze your pool, all, the, all the piping cracks. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, but a buddy of mine had that happen unseasonably cold weather. Oh, really? uh, man, Ooh. to replace all the, all the pipes and everything. Oh, Yikes. God. This is the yeah. first. I've, only, this, I've never had a pool until this last year, so we'll learn how it works. Now, uh, speaking of pools and water and things that are cold, we have yes. a really cool world record involving ice. ice and swimming. And uh, with that world record, a big, giant case of the willies for oh, you today. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's scary. Really uncomfortable. Oh. I'm, I'm surprised this one's legal. I wonder this if it's... world record? Yeah. Oh. You mean they? you think they set it rogue? But they had to have the the adjudicator. But they don't let um, they don't Guinness doesn't allow records where you can die doing them, right? Um, and this one's pretty obviously. That you, makes... you want to review what I'm talking about? You hear what he's doing? That's not what <laughs> I had. Oh no! What did you know? What, what, what was your start going to no. be? <laughs> no, 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 no! Is it? I'm got the guy is, 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 is the Chiefs some, fan, it, Robin it, Banks. But is it, no, is it like something about the brother-in-law of the uh, the uh, defensive coordinator of some losing team that was in the news. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That guy is an amazing fellow. <laughs> that story was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> A Croatian athlete has oh. Yeah, super, uh, yeah. A Croatian athlete <laughs> has broken the world record for the longest distance free diving under ice in a wetsuit. Oh, yeah, God. this always is scary. That is and a nightmare for th me. They're going straight down. And somebody uh, oh. sent me the answer to this. There's a documentary out there about a guy and a girl, and he's an instructor in free diving, and she's a competitor. And naturally, she ends up dying in the end. They fall in love, and it's it's. Oh my God! Good luck watching that movie. Isn't that the, and doesn't his mother die also? I think his mother does she die. She disappears. Yeah. yeah. They die diving? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The girl died. Yeah. The oh girl drowns. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They never found her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't oh. think this is I don't think this is officially a Guinness World Record. Valentina Cafola bested the previous record of 413 feet by free diving 45 stories, 459 feet beneath a frozen lake in Italy. Did you see the video where she... Uh, no, I'm not watching no. the video. She comes back up to the surface and can't find the hole, so she cuts a new hole with her nipples. <laughs> 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 All right, that's very funny. Uh, I'm looking at this thing. I don't think this is an, a Guinness World Record. Because I don't think they recognize stuff this dangerous. It's, all of it says world record on here, but it does not say Guinness. Yeah, You're right. I'm looking at this right now, and it's uh, this. This is from the Telegraph. This is a version from the UK source known as the Telegraph. Okay, and the source on this, whoever whoever put this story together, <laughs> I did. I won't say who it was. I'll just look at them and whistle. <laughs> <laughs> the source is in Italian. Well, you know, I, there's, I just Confederation Mundial de Activities. I just Googled. Sub I Googled and found another, I found another version in English. From, sub uh, twat it. Uh, what? Uh, hang on. Yeah. Sub. It's a sub twat and Confederation Kunalangam. Uh. Right. Ah, uh, yeah. So a, bra bra a, a uh. bravo to Miss Kafala. It's Kunalangas. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's just incredibly dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure she's very trained, but yes, yeah. risk, risk always. Because you're going down. If something goes wrong on the way up, there's no air, right? <laughs> they, don't, they, they, don't have, they don't have like... They don't have like. They don't dive with the. They don't have tanks, tanks no. hanging hanging on the rope or something. So they no. can come back up, so they don't have to worry about the it's bends. Finding the whole part that would scare me. Yeah. Oh my god. And that documentary I was they talking must, she about. She must have been following a rope. That's the one they were diving where they had that sign underneath the water. It said, "Turn, turn back. You're taking your own life, your hands or whatever." Does it really? Yeah. Isn't that the one where the hole is about yes. eighty feet off? It's right there. It's on, right there on, on the, the shore. by the beach. Yep. Scary. Yep. 
and it's like shore, 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 180 feet down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was a thousand feet. It's a crazy. Maybe it's some crazy depth. Now, let me ask you this, Christy. Yes, sir. Uh, the gym you go to, uh-huh. um, they have free diving? No. Okay. <laughs> well, Christy and I go to the same gym. Did you know that they have one of those ice baths now? I did notice have that. Have you done yeah. that? I, um, I have not done the ice bath. I've done the ice thing that uh, Al and I did. Al Jackson. Oh, the, um, uh, the, the, the cryo chamber yeah. thing or whatever it's called. Okay, if you, could you just do that ice bath where you sit in? I don't think so. Every now and then I'll put a little uh, extra ice in my cocktail. <laughs> oh, does that uh, that count? Yeah, that's Have the you same done thing. it? No, I don't. I don't want to. You know who's that. really into it? Uh, Reggie Miller and his yeah. entire family. They he, have a big ice b- bath. Pool he has a, pool. a deal with the people, and he got a yeah. couple installed at his house. They're really cool. Yeah. So do they have? To, uh, the, the, do they have to bring ice in bags, or do no, they, no, no, no? They, they have, have a special special plumbing it, that the water comes out at a certain temperature. It runs through a deal, and, and do, do they have to put ice in it? It's also? like forty. Uh, no, it's like forty degrees or something. <sighs> you don't have to worry about the ice or anything. It arrives cold at that It's called a cold plunge pool. Yeah. Okay. Very popular. Yeah. And I assume They're that the, very popular. the male member does a little cust- retreats. custer-like retreat. Well, yeah. I think that's why Reggie is so popular. You don't have to worry about that. A lot of people use do the cold showers now. That's a big deal. It's supposed to help with migraines. And uh, I had to use the cold showers. One of the one of those weddings, uh, man, <laughs> mm. it wasn't cold enough though. No, was it? Wasn't cold enough. Talk about the ice bucket challenge. Wouldn't, uh, erase memories. Yeah. I can tell you that. <laughs> that legs open, furnace kicks on. Hey, Raycon everyday earbuds. Let me. T- <laughs> she walk into a room and the furnace would come on. That's exactly right. Raycon everyday earbuds with the fabulous. You've heard about them. Gel tips. That fit every ear ever made. And they actually stay in your ears. Whether you're going for a run, walking the dog, or dancing to your favorite songs, tunes, like any serious uh, relationship, Raycons are here for you. A good time and a long time with eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and Raycons, about half the price of other premium audio brands. Don't forget awesome features like noise isolation. You can customize your very own personal sound profile. And Raycon Everyday Earbuds also have tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Check them out. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom to get 15% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. 15% off and free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Love my Raycon ear, but love the Raycon headphones, by the way. Those uh, headphones, are, uh, once again, if there's a vacation coming up, got that spring break, get them for the kids. They'll stay in the back seat of the car and be quiet, watching their videos and playing their games and not going, are we there yet? Coming up, we have, you know those jet packs? Oh, yeah. It's cool. There's a, a jet pack <laughs> suit race that yeah. happened last week. It's really cool. No wings. Dudes with jetpacks. Yeah. It's so cool. No wings! By the Just way, like Iron Man. Yeah, one guy did uh, um, crash. We'll find out what happened. Oh, good. Uh, uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1 1-8- 8. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Joining us in the Napa Auto Parts studios in the special annex, to my right and behind Josh, uh, scoot over there, Josh. Yes, this is we, the new. You know, here. This is the new oh, uh, I know. lighter the, thing. So, yeah, so doing your phone. Yes, uh, we have uh, Donnie Baker along with the Pork Pistols. Hey boys, uh, Donnie Baker on uh, on tour doing, tour right Good now. Um, Donnie, entrepreneur. Donnie, famous for his uh, koozies and uh, other uh, semi legal uh, merchandise. Paraphernalia. Uh, Donnie, I like your your wolf. Uh, a t-shirt with the wolf wearing a nice Santa cap. Yeah, Miss right. Santa Wolf. I still got my boat for sale too, Tom. If you can mention that. Okay. Now, do you know that Morgan Freeman's <laughs> selling his boat? So you're up against. Mr. Yeah, I appreciate Freeman. him boat blocking me like everybody else. <laughs> so he's boat blocking. Boat blocking. I've got another now a neighbor four lots down selling his boat. Five hundred less than my boat. Oh. And he don't even have an outboard motor on his. Oh. oh. Yeah. Mine's got an Evan Roots. If you can mention that when you plug it, mm-hmm. he don't even have an outboard. He's got an inbred motor which runs good, but his sister has to start it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, how can I compete with that? You know, I'm on Craigslist. He's got a whole budget to advertise on Ancestry.com. So, uh -huh. of course, he's going <laughs> oh, That's That sounds great. I'm surprised you have an Evan Rude. I thought you'd be more of a uh, Johnson guy. Nope, got an Evan Rude. Stick the governor off it. Th it's a beast on water. <laughs> uh, so, well, I'm sorry that you're getting yacht blocked, but uh, we need to get to the band here. Once again, can you introduce the fellas in the band? Yeah, on bass, I got Todd Boner. Uh -huh. And then on lead guitar, my best friend ever, Scotty Winkler. And on drums, we got Dusty Privet. Uh -huh. So this is our band. We're the Pork Pistols. We started off as Dirt Nickel years ago, and then Boner quit, and we came Mucus Plug. And then that didn't last, and Scotty got on the pills, and then we was Turtles <laughs> with the D. Uh -huh. but, Matt, see, we're done with Christian rock. Uh -huh. What we're doing here is so much different. <laughs> well, now, Donnie, I, I know we have time for a couple more tunes here. Uh, is, is this your new original one? What are we playing? This is a new original tape I wrote. It sort of ties into Thanksgiving. Because, you know, this is really the only time of year you start mixing stuff in your meals. Nobody really sits down with four or five side dishes when they go out, you know, to, you know, wherever they're eating. This is like home-style stuff like the Pilgrims did. Oh. But it can sometimes shock your system. And that's what this tape's about from Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols. And I'll start this one, Dusty. This sounds like my boat when I start my boat. Oh. Okay? And we do this one because Motley Crue pissed out and quit, so somebody's got to <laughs> sing her tapes good. Good. Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols. <laughs> I'm a huffer at heart. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the Fat Boy Slim video, but I kick it old school. That's great. Uh, have you interviewed Christopher Walken? No. Uh, no. Sure? Okay, well, here's your chance. And keep in mind, all of his thoughts are completely unconnected. <laughs> so go ahead and ask Christopher Walken anything. All right, what's, the, what's your new project, Christopher? Frankenstein never scared me. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been working on the on the film? Marsupials do. <laughs> and uh, when's its release date? Cause they're fast. <laughs> they are fast. Oh, they are. Wow. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Tom Radio. Comedian Bobcat Goldthwait is here with us. I like goofy movies. Huh? I didn't see Phantom Menace or the uh, Attack of the Clones mm -hmm. because uh, I'm 40 years old and I've been <laughs> <laughs> So, Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings, you know, none of that stuff really. <laughs> like a jerk, I went to the Star Wars re-release. Have any of you nerds ever seen a <laughs> <laughs> Could you pick a out of a police lineup. If I had a and a donut and a mop, could you tell me the difference between these things? Because the day you actually see one, you're going to throw that stormtrooper cookie jar right out the window. You're going to go, what was I thinking about? I, go, I don't know. We've been trying to tell you about it for years. I, actually, uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke chick up. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first, everybody. Safety first. Hello, this is comedian John Evans, the High Plains thrifter. Hello, it's coming up today. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Love is in the air in sports. Oh, Intrigue. Really? Crime. Prison. Ooh. Wow, we got it all. All of it, man. It's it's, all that's just up. the Dallas Cowboys. Um, <laughs> one time, uh, we uh, uh, also were going to feature some of our interview yesterday with Mr. Peter Frampton. And uh, Peter's once again up for uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can vote for him and your favorites. Uh, he's one of ours, one of the nicest guys in music, uh, and not to mention ultra-talented, but uh, yeah. just such a good guy. He put a, uh, well, uh, sad news yesterday, uh, uh, comedians. Uh, yeah, Richard. Richard Lewis passed yeah, away. Yeah, very sad. And uh, Peter put up a picture of Richard. 
And uh, they, Peter and uh, Richard were somewhere sitting on the couch. Uh, they've been friends for 30 years. Yeah, they've been yeah. friends for... Uh, the caption said Richard often called yeah. him every, every day. Yeah. They, they would talk every day. Yeah, Richard Lewis is, was also one of the nicest guys in comedy. Mm -hmm. Just really, really sweet. So thus, that's why they gravitated toward each other. But you had a... You had a problem with Richard Lewis, and if you're not going to share it, I will for you. You didn't like his head of hair. That's all there is to it. No, no, no. He had a yeah. great head of hair. Yeah, you did. Exactly. And you did not <laughs> He talked to him. He made fun of himself all the time about how he was so focused on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, would, he would rub it and look at the, look at the, look, 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 look at the promote, he would, you know, run his hand, look sure. at the promotional pictures of, what was it, Anything But Love, the TV show he was on? Yes, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I, mean, that is a, I, I like that show. That's yeah. a lot, that quaff is a lot of work. Yeah. He really had it going. It was kind of a puffy mullet. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, sad news. In any event, what I was trying to say was we're going to feature some of our interview with Peter Frampton. Cool. And if you get a chance, how do you vote for him in the Hall of Fame, Christy? Rockhall.com slash vote. Right. Do it today. Don't be shy. And uh, Don't coming cost up, nothing. Uh, coming up, a, a bonus edition of the Ace Cosby Joke of the Day. And I've, I've got a special request for one Son right here. Oh, bitch. Uh, <laughs> William here, kind enough to... Uh, to uh, send us a little something. We'll uh, pass this along to Ace. Oh, is it an actual joke? Uh, it's it's a, um, what they call a that'll tag. Be some, that'll be something ah. different. A tag, Christy. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. it's taken here, Ace. A tag, huh? Ace always hates this. Oh. 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 oh that's a and shame. In an attempt to pass oh, Ace the piece mean, of paper, it fell be, into the chasm that is... It's going to be lost forever. Oh, yeah, Christy's whoever going did, for Christy's whoever climbing designed over. Don't the, risk your life, Christy. Oh, oh, oh Christy. Throw her oh. some dollars. Christy's standing up on the table. Somebody play pour some sugar on me. You're going to have to... Get the bowl out. Christy, now you're going to have to sterilize that table. You put your feet on it. Oh. Oh, gross. Who designed this idiotic room as if I didn't know? Why is there all that dead space in the middle? <laughs> I didn't design this. How do you like 3D? How do you what else? The only thing I asked for when we, they redid this room, I uh, for the green room I wanted a dishwasher. And a shower. And I wanted a shower. You need help, Christy? Getting out? I didn't get okay. the show. Good luck, man. I, I, it'd be it'd be awful if you fell, but it'd be kind of fun. Oh, jeez, man. Wow, the moon was early today, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, it's tight. awful tight. So, uh, what's, what does it say, Ace? It's cute. What does oh. it say, Ace? Well, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Ace, you keep it to yourself. I, I, I got to have a, my production. Oh, yeah. sure. You're right. Uh, all right, here yeah. we go. Here, here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Ace Cosby, here he is. His joke of the day. I, I told you the other day that the uh, World Championships of Origami was on TV. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. That's right. Uh, you know, it was on pay-per-view. Uh -huh. Right? That was Ace Cosby's joke <laughs> Pay-per-view. So that no. was that was Ace Cosby's joke right. of the day. Uh, oh, I was going to say, now. that sounds familiar to me. Yeah. There's bad news. What? what? The league folded. Oh. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Hold Isn't that a nice tag? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a nice... It's origami. Said, it's about folding, Pat. I Hopefully. Know. <sighs> Should I be worried that I'm winded from doing that? No, no, no. <laughs> That's it. You're short. Those These desks are tall. You're uh, good. Okay. We should explain. This uh, This room, it's like a giant round table with a big hole in the middle. Yes, and there's no way to access the hole unless you jump over the... No, How many times have I heard that? Yeah. Except <laughs> on your birthday, right? You got the cash. <laughs> yeah. We should have given it a glass of you wine. You should or be two. more concerned. You put put your ass in the camera, and everybody, everybody got that's a meme. That's that's coming down the pipe uh, yeah. right now. Oh, All right, now uh, you oh. promised something. Uh, would you say something romantic in sports? Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know what to. Uh, Love's in the air. Do we have uh, the wedding march? Da, 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 uh, da, da, got married. Da, 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 Give me a second. Da, I can probably da, find da, it. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. What, what, what are the lyrics? Here comes the bride. All full of, all full of sink. Is that, no, oh, no. I've heard all dressed in white. Uh, yeah, oh. I've heard that. Yeah, skinny is <laughs> a girl. What, what is it? Uh, here comes the bride, all dressed in white. Skinny Down came her girdle. No, what is it? I don't know that one. Her girdle was so tight. <laughs> something about her, her, so, so something tight? About her girdle uh, falling down. I don't remember Here comes the bride, all full of pink. Raise up her No, no, no. Full of stink. Here comes the bride, her vagina. No, no. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's me on cello. It's beautiful. Baseball star Shohei Otani. Show, show him what? what? Has announced he's married. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. The two-way two -way star, he pitches, he bats for the Dodgers. 
He uh, signed a big contract in December, seven hundred million for ten years, Eight. and just like that, he got married. Yeah, wow, well, that's a surprise. I'm sure it's true love. <laughs> He uh, posted on Instagram in Japanese. I'm being told that's what it says. <laughs> the season is approaching, but I would like to announce to everyone that I have gotten married. Well, how nice. This continues. A quote. The season's approaching. I would like to announce to everyone I've gotten married to a Japanese woman. Okay. Please do not uh, conduct any unauthorized interviews with my wife. Oh, what? That's what it says. He put up on okay. Instagram. All right, fine, good for him. So, who's the most famous Japanese woman? Maybe we could uh, Yoko Ono. Yo, Yoko is the, on the list. That's exactly right. Could he have married Yoko Ono? You In December, that's... he said, "I think I'll never get married." Hmm. Well, oh, Ace, it's show show Hey Otani. Show, show him what? what? Is he really married? <laughs> I'll, I'll look into it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Oh, well, oh, well. Well, thank you very much. That, yeah. So these are there's romance, but there's also crime in sports? There's also uh, crime in sports. Well, now I have to hop to that because... You, well, you previewed it. No, you are running the sport, and I'm not going to have it. <laughs> yeah. I will not have it. Well, I don't want to have you sitting there reading while we're staring A at A social it. media... <laughs> That's if not is... what's happening. We were talking. This may or may not be his bride... Thank you, Chris. But she's, they definitely were dating at one point last summer. What's his name? Her, Her name? name? Kamalani Dung. <laughs> oh. Now that's a very specific fetish. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah boy, Dung. I tell you what, you want to have nose plugs when you Kamalani do that. Kamalani Dung. She's a softball player. I've heard of Model about and that. actress, so. Oh. Yeah. Mm. She's pretty. She's quite. Best looking softball player. last name player. really is Dung. Yeah, D-U-N-G. Yeah, there's no one, there's no different way to pronounce that. She's a softball pitcher. They call her throwing dung. <laughs> She's really bringing the dung. Professional yeah. softball player. Glad, she, <laughs> glad she's not with Joey Chestnut. <laughs> Eating oh. dung. She lives here Yikes. in the states. Be nice. What? She was a pitcher for the what? California Golden Bears and the Fresno State Bulldogs, according oh, to this. Well, how about yeah. that? They just uh -huh. signed a big TV contract with. ESPN. Who did the the Bulldogs? No, they didn't. I made that whole. Who would watch that? <laughs> okay, if you got it, you, you found the thing you were promoting. Or no, right? I'm not, coming up in sports. We're gonna have uh, Tyreek Hill. He's back in the uh, back in the news and finally uh, admitted that he uh, hurt that woman. No, so badly. no, no. Uh, we're gonna have uh, something else. Tom wants to do. It's, oh, it's the Tom's world. We're just paying rent. Coming right I found something that's actually interesting. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, oh, I forgot. Yeah, that woman was, uh, in, in Tom's mind, overweight and therefore not worth talking right. about. Fat, fat, fat. Oh, fatty. she's definitely not fat. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? Why are you putting words in my mouth? I, no, <laughs> you put words in your mouth. No, I she get. I believe the quote was, she got what she deserved. Yeah, she did. <clears throat> there you go. This yeah. is the woman who was playing football with a professional football player? The, ver the very definition of blaming the victim. No. Multiple witnesses Tom said he was a jerk in this situation. Yes, and, and he, sh he took her by surprise and <laughs> never mind. I'll bet she was bad-mouthing him and he said, okay. Let's see. You uh, know what she should have done? see if you can take one of these. She should have just laid back and enjoyed it. Am I right, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Do you well, hear how it so, sounds uh, now? Well, when you uh, obviously detain to the story and <laughs> put your, put your, uh, put your, social, your socialist spin on it, Stupidity's I'm sure that, you're looking for. Uh, that'll be a uh, uh, highlight. My <laughs> sportscast <laughs> coming up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, Good. I'm Stand sure, up for I'm yourself. Sure, damn right. I'm sure Pravda has the same point of view. Uh, when we come back. Let's hope we get to something wrong with interesting. Vlad. Uh, I have this, him on speed dial. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue the conversation. Check out. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. Ah!
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Like every other comedian ever, I too have recently broken up with uh, my girlfriend. So you had to let her go from the van. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I unchained her from the radiator. Well, I guess that's over. I well. broke up, my last girlfriend, I broke up via voicemail. Is oh, that really? tacky? That is yes. kind of tacky. Uh, well, hear me out. All right. I didn't leave a message on her voicemail. Oh. I left it on the outgoing message on my voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Hi, this is Brendan. I yeah, 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 exactly. Leave a message it's unless you're... Less confrontational. Yeah, if this is Susan, it's over. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hit the bricks, hug a mug. <laughs> yeah, but, but anybody else just leave your message? Yeah, anybody else leave a message. Don't forget your number. <laughs> Did you start with your message? Your message is important to me. <laughs> unless it's Susan. Did you say hit the bricks, hug a mug? <laughs> yeah, I called her hug a mug. She's ugly. <laughs> I was dating an ugly girl. Oh, <laughs> well, somebody... Yeah. Has to. She was really, she was hard on the eyes. <laughs> wow. Uggamug. Uggamug. Yeah. I think well, I'm going to start calling you that. That'll be like my little pet name for you, Chrissy. Uggamug. Oh, well, that's not eyes. a good one. No, no, well, I'm certainly not. Hey, I on. just think it's cute. Uh, no, no, well, you could you be mean to ugly girls because they don't have feelings. <laughs> I, I saw that on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> well, that's what you were told, right? Well, there you go. I discovered uh, that. Hey, on the hey by the way, I have something for the I, quotes page. I have nicely done. Usually you don't make the quotes page in the first 10 minutes, but you just did. She bought rocks one time from Pier One Imports. She bought a oh, basket yeah. of rocks. No kidding. To sure. Decorate her coffee table with. Well, they had like words chiseled into them. Oh, like, okay. That's weird. They said like joy and happiness, mm -hmm. friendship. Mm -hmm. So like one night, I just took a handful of those rocks and I drove around my neighborhood chucking them through people's <laughs> windows. Huh. Joy. Like, here comes happiness. <laughs> we were driving to the mall one time so she could buy some dumb stuff. And there was a car in front of us, and it had a bumper sticker that said, my boss is a Jewish carpenter on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was all like, my boss is a Jewish carpenter. What's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, think about it. Mm -hmm. Who's the most famous Jewish carpenter you can think of? Right. And I swear to God, she, she went, I don't know. Geppetto? <laughs> <laughs> that totally happened <laughs> for real in real life. You know how to mow lawns? I don't know. What am I going to do with them? You don't know. He might have been. He might have saved up for years for the storage. Unit. You don't know. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. She's a former exotic dancer and adult film star with a rack as big as the Grand Tetons. Now, she's a small claims court judge, and all her decisions are final. Catch the hot new show from Bob and Tom Television. She's sexy. She's stacked. She's Jugs Judy. <laughs> this court is now in session. And before we get started, let's take a moment to let our bailiff introduce himself. Hi. I'm Bob Cavoyan. <laughs> Jugs Judy, may I say that you look absolutely stunning today. You certainly are one gorgeous lady. <laughs> Why, thank you, Bob. You keep flirting like that, and my gavel won't be the only thing getting banged today. My, it's a little warm in here. Does anyone mind if I loosen my robe? <laughs> Your Honor, that's what I called Exhibit Double D. Bob, meet me in my chambers after court. I'd love to go through your briefs. Oh, 
and bring your handcuffs. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Judge Judy. It's a guilty pleasure. Available only on Bob and Tom Television. This court is adjourned. Now let's all go to my place for margaritas and skinny dipping. Bob. Catch Jugs Judy only on the Bob and Tom Television Network. Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwait. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I got thrown out of J.C. Penney the other day. <laughs> really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> Believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins in there? Uh-huh. And they taunt you, too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. <laughs> Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom. Just runs in the family. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Perhaps a tune from a Pat. Tune? A tune? We should do something special because it's uh, the 29th of February. Oh, yeah. It right. won't be the 29th of February again for... Four more. four more. Is it four, four more, more years? Is it four more years? It's four more years. Ah. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice. I wonder if we'll be here. There's Josh Arnold. <laughs> I'm saying. Wow, that's Some depressing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be down at least one, no, no. maybe two. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's my impression of me. Here's my impression of me in four more years. Okay, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. <clears throat> That's not your heart beating. <laughs> no, no, I'm knocking on the lid. Oh, oh, oh chick. Okay. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> Hi, chick. And here's Tom. Happy Leap Day. Do something with your, uh, do something fun with your extra day. Oh, uh, yeah. What just, are you going to do? No, no, just go ahead and jump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, uh, the uh, tradition uh, on this is a. Uh, Where did you get this? It's not legally. You're talking about this like it's legally binding. <laughs> And you need to stop that. Oh. It's a fun little <laughs> stupid idea. Um, for those, you know, of, you, for those of, of you, for those of you familiar with other cultures other than television viewing, um, there's us an, TVites are Irish, uh, fine people. Irish tradition for more than a thousand years, um, and it uh, uh, the apocryphal story is it dates back to Saint Patrick or something. The point is, um, the notion is that a woman can ask a man to marry. Her yes, and he must say yes on the 29th of February. Yes. There's an actual rom com about this. Go yeah, on, leap uh, here. Uh, yeah, I didn't oh. see that. Really, mm-hmm. who's in it? Oh. Amy Adams. I, I think you're right. I, think that's... I did not see that, but I, I was familiar with the tradition. Uh, and a Pat being of Irish heritage is oh, also yes. for, for me. So, um, now Pat, does your girlfriend know about this? She does. I told her last night, and and. She thought it was a comical. She said, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> she says, you're good. You're good. <laughs> She's taking the day off. <laughs> Perhaps, well, I, well, I better wear my big pants, Perhaps she said. So monkeys, business, I She's think. going <laughs> apple picking in Peru. <laughs> so monkeys can fly out of my ass. Nice night night out. So yeah. you have a, a, tribute, a tribute to the woman asking a man? Is What's that? Sure I do. <laughs> Attention, ladies. Here's some news about Leap Day. About Leap Day. The Irish say it's the woman's turn to propose. (laughs) (laughs) So get yourself down on one knee and ask some dude, please marry me. Oh, he can't say no. Or a leprechaun will do a speed bag on his balls. (laughs) 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 Now, don't you know he must say yes on leap day. On leap day. Looking at these women just gives me the creep. You know why? I'll tell you why. There's a fatty, fat, fat, and an uggo, too. Drunk redhead chick with pimples, common for you. An Amazonian woman wanting to peg on me. On me. 
They say marriage <laughs> won't last long on leave day. Yay. Not on leave day. You'll catch the Irish flu and head for home, they say. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, they're wrong, I know they are Cause my Paula bought me a brand new guitar oh, And I won't quit till I'm a star On Leap Day On Leap Day On Leap Day Tighten that belt On Leap Day Peg time Peg time Oh Peg time On Leap Day Get your feet set. <laughs> I'll make you jump. Oh, what, what's that joke? Did you jump Did you a little, little, little first? first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I think that involves a, doesn't that involve a parachute. I'll Nicely be, done, Pat. I'll be Thanks. behind the couch. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, the tribute. To the, Leap Year. To Leap Day. Leap day. Once Very again, nice. Leap ladies. Year is a movie came out in 2010 with Amy Adams and Matthew Good. Is that it? Or Goody? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. he's... No, Goody. Yeah. He's Goody? a watchman. Goody. Matthew Goody. Is it, a, uh, is it Leap Year or Leap Day? It's called Leap Year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. On Leap Year. Happy uh, happy 29th of February. Don't part... I secretly wish way down deep inside that Tom watches these movies and he doesn't tell anybody. Right. It, and he gets wrapped up. He cries. Loves Hallmark. That, that's where mm -hmm. he has all of his emotions mm -hmm. watching these lovely movies. Again. I, oh, yeah. Because everybody has a release. Sure. Right? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. You're false. But, uh, wrong, mm. but, uh, I and, love them. I love those movies. And, and, I, and you are not afraid to admit it. No. Yeah. I think they're right. fun. Do, I, I, do you hear him? He's doth protest. There were a couple on in the background. Uh, I uh, would like to write one. Has anybody done a strong parody of one of those? Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know how strong, yeah. but um, the one that uh, that I have not, I haven't seen it yet. But I, I was interested in writing one with this story, and then I saw the commercial. And went, oh my gosh, it's already been done. Was the one about people being stuck in a Hallmark Christmas movie? Yes, and how they don't like them. Yeah, but all of a sudden they're living in one. Oh, that's good. That, yeah, that'd that be, was a theatrical I, release. I well, thought that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, there was one that was a theatrical release? I believe. Wow. Wasn't there? About that? Cool. Um, oh, there was one with um, the chick from Pitch Perfect, Fat yeah, Amy or whatever. Rebel, Rebel Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And she, yes. uh, she's, she all of a sudden appears in a romantic comedy, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hmm. Is yeah. that good? Um, <laughs> She's entertaining, isn't she? I like yeah. Rebel Wilson. Yeah. yeah. Very funny. Very funny. I miss the chubby Rebel Wilson. I gotta tell you, really? she's real thin now, and that's gotta yeah. be the worst thing yeah. a, a fat person can hear. They did all this work and they <laughs> lost yeah. weight. You were funnier when you were fat. Oh, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Jonah Hill and Rebel Wilson and Melissa. McCarthy, they all have to hear. Yeah, different, they all are. Well, to, uh, Melissa McCarthy's uh, uh, former mate um, uh, is now also very thin. Billy Gardell. Oh, Billy, Billy Gardell. Gardell. Yeah, you, but yeah. you know they're all hearing it. Uh, you were you were funnier when you were fat. Billy Gardell. Oh, you sons of bitches. He had some serious <laughs> medical issues, so he, had, he got. Well, hurt. I think most of these people, some of these quote unquote m magical weight loss drugs, are for a very good reason, helping people with diabetes and a lot of these. Well, Billy Gardell's people. been thin for a while, so I know. That's he, great. he he had the what it's called the bariatric surgery. Yeah. Yeah, so but uh, he's also he's a terrific actor. Oh, whatever you got to do to be happy and healthy. Yeah, but, happy uh, and healthy. Does he still? Uh, have don't that, give uh, the people a hard time. No. Does he still have that really bad, horrible condition? The mustache. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that mustache. It's awful. Yeah, I don't know why someone hasn't yeah. said something. Mm -mm. What? I'm, say, I'm saying something right now. Shave it off. It's hard to say. He's, he's one of the nicest people on the planet. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've met him three or four times. He's always the nicest person. One of the nicest people I've first ever time But he, he would was, laugh if you went in. The first time he was in here, it was about 15 years ago, maybe 20. And he had half of his head shaved in the side and then a huge long he had, You're right. He, there's still headshots of him with that look. Way yeah. before that was happening. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he thought, this is going to be the next big thing. And then when no one else did it, he said, well, that was a dumb idea. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get back to looking normal. <laughs> yeah. Normal. Uh, let's uh, get back to sports. You, were, you promised something interesting. A social media <laughs> influencer <laughs> uh, is suing Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill over an alleged incident that happened at the uh, football star's South Florida home last summer in a you lawsuit. Sophie <laughs> Halls. Sophie's attorneys filed Broward County Circuit Court February 23. The influencer claims that Hill forcefully and purposefully shoved her while the two were participating in football drills at I his got, mansion. I got pushed playing football. 
Hill. Uh, uh, it's, Hall. A, it's a contact sport. She's seeking $75,000 in damage. That doesn't seem like a lot. No, that doesn't. She could have gone for millions if she wanted All wanted. lawsuits should start from $1.2 million and work their way up. I don't know why <laughs> she's got $75,000. Maybe she legitimately any, has a problem with medical bills sense. or something, and she just wants them taken care of. I doubt of. it. And oh, my God. So but she's an influencer. Right. Can we look up and see what? How does she influence? Does she wear makeup and it tells us how her? to put uh, makeup on? Yeah. What is her name? Shannon. No. Nope. Sophie, Sophie, Hall. Sophie Hall. Right now, I'm looking at her page. She's influencing my wiener to get stiffer. <laughs> <laughs> you know there are uh, videos, I, millions of videos online, Tom, showing uh, other uh, how, how to dress, how to apply makeup. Oh God, yes, tons of them. Um, <laughs> What's her name? Where to go? Sophie. <laughs> oh my oh, lord! What? Let me see she's that's got right. she's got quite a booty. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah she it's, does. Uh, it's really something. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really, really, that's really terrific. That should, that should, that should they so should take that to this uh, lawsuit will area get her another three hundred thousand followers. We're two point one million right now. Is she a two point one? She is a two point one. Yeah. Well, she's uh, she uh, she has content. Oh, uh, you know what her first thing on her bio is, chick? <laughs> what? Americanized Brit. Brit. Mm -hmm. <gasps> she probably has an accent. Tom! She's six one. Uh, that's that's also tall. the circumference. That's of her, tall. The, circum tall. the circumference of her ass. Too tall. She's all butt. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Soph. You're a knockout. You should really, you should really like forget about <laughs> as if you, as if you haven't. But every now and then you'll pull back. You'll try to spare a feeling. Forget all that. Just just go with the the fat people you don't like. Just fat. hit. No, she's all butt. She's very. It looks like she's very healthy, but all butt. <laughs> Would you admit that? Does it say what she uh, influences? No. No, um, not really. No, she just just pictures of her. It's just her. Links to her uh, OnlyFans stuff like that. No, no OnlyFans that I'm seeing. Um, hey, you remember uh, coming up in sports a couple uh, years ago? We had four teams in the playoffs in college football. You remember that, Tom? Yeah. And now this year, we're going to go to 12 teams. Remember that in college football? This is a brand new year, 12 teams. Coming up next year, 14 teams. The next season after this season. Okay. They're going to change it again, and we'll have a case. It's my understanding. It's, and then that year after that, it's going to be 24 teams. The, the the new ones are all from the NBA. That's exactly, yeah. The only you ones think, that don't make the NBA playoffs. So you think you can play basketball yeah. or how about football? <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll have a survey from the players of the National Football League that I uh, find uh, kind of sort of interesting. Yeah, I, think I saw that. That's really fascinating. Uh, uh, right now, uh, let's, uh, let's speak of, uh, speaking of butts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you like big butts and you cannot lie, uh, let's stay on the topic, I should say, of butts. And how about getting a kick in your butt when it comes to your food life, your food lifestyle, if you want to use that phrase. I'm talking about the boredom that we're dealing with sometimes where it's, well, we're having that again. Oh, thanks, honey. Maybe your cooking stinks. Maybe hers is awful. Maybe uh, you're sick of the same restaurants. Maybe you've, you're tired of paying an extra 80 bucks to have somebody deliver the mac and cheese. How about uh, trying HelloFresh? It's a uh, great idea. How does it work? Well, let's see. HelloFresh does the shopping. They do the measuring. They send you the recipes with cards with pictures. I, I, I'm going to have to use the word idiot proof. And then uh, you throw the stuff together and voila, you've got restaurant quality meals. It's sometimes very exotic, always delicious, sometimes very simple, sometimes classic comfort food. They've got more than three dozen recipes every week to choose from. So get rid of the food blahs by trying HelloFresh. Christy Lee, what are you looking at right now? I'm not looking at anything except for Sophie Hall. The whole oh, okay. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> okay. Um. How about... On a chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese. Okay, honest to gosh, this Whoa. is one of our favorites in our family. This is a wonderful meal. There are six steps. It comes with this beautiful zucchini and the uh, chicken sausage, and you have a great Italian meal all right there from HelloFresh, and all you have to do is whip it together in less than 30 minutes. That looks so that, good. It is really good, trust wow. me. Um, now, well, let's get back to how do you do it. Well, you go to HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Now, why the BT Show Free? Well, that will entitle you to one free breakfast item for life when you keep that subscription active. So uh, kick your food life in the butt and get some great food. And by the way, they've got classic comfort food, and they've also got the exotic. They've even got vegetarian for people like Pat. So use the code BT Show Free at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show Free. Coming up, we're going to feature some of our interview with Peter Frampton. This is the Bob and Tom Show.
Hi, this is Carl Lewis, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Two great comedians, one radio show. That's us today. Girl, the food was great. The company, even better. Why sit here all night long, going on about the weather? I know it's our first date, and good girls gotta wait. But I just turned 83, and you said you're 78. What I'm thinking, let's make love. We're old and we're shrinking. The hour's late. Let's just do it on our first date. Couldn't tell you if it's recently because that didn't work. Cables out. Okay. Um, I got to play the mail. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what's the what's the phrase of, about it? Well, yeah, sometimes there's more month than money. <laughs> there's, more, there's, there's more month. There's more month right. than money. I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, 25th coming around, we we started damn near started it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I forget. No, these are, Man, these, we've been there, though. Chick, the, these are the Dickie right. twins. Your name right? Yeah. Yeah. This, right. And, uh, you're, what are you, Rod Rod Dickie? And he's what is I'm it? Dick Dickie. That's Ricky Dickie. Ricky Dickie and Rod Rod Dickie. <laughs> How I know. you doing? No, no it's not Ricky Rod Rod Dickie. Dickie. <laughs> no, Ricky Dickie and Dickie Dickie. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. The Dickie brothers. Where'd you get Rod? Right. No, no, the Dickie twins. Our great uncle James wrote Deliverance. Did he? Oh, James Dickie. That's right. I kept telling him, no, you need more songs. To me. Yeah, uh, more bunghole. <laughs> you told me I'm, I couldn't say that. I'm okay. more, I'm more Josh than fire today. <laughs> I'm the intellectual in the family, and uh, he's a little bit more earthy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> we'll get back to Health that. officials in Canada. I can tell you how old you are just by smelling your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Drew, try him. Try him. Kill him. Try him. Try him. Uh, 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 you're 35. <laughs> He's usually right with him five or six years. Yeah. You know something? It's true. Hey, Josh, an honest to God, it would be worth to dress you up. <laughs> what about me? Get I want to be dressed up. Get a, get a booth at the state fair. Yeah. You know, dress you up dress you up like Ricky Dicky. Right. Get a booth at the state fair with a straight face. Have a sign up there. I can guess your age by smelling your finger. Yeah. And, and, and see how many people... How many people would come up and go, well, this guy can't do it? And yes. God, but what happens great. when he's wrong? Wouldn't they be mad? I never Who cares? Take his you're, money? You're, 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 as Josh puts it, you're wrong. just doing it for the viral video. Uh, are you going to take money from these people or are you just doing it for free? You say, if, if, we can't, no, you, you, if we can't do it, we'll give you three bucks oh, or something. Okay. The yeah. thing about the Dickey brothers, they always have their trapper hats on. Yeah. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, overalls. And uh, they're, they're pretty educated. They're not, uh-huh. you know. Now you wear the overalls with, no, with Wait, no, no underwear and no undershirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> little side boob. <laughs> we ain't stupid. <laughs> oh, we, can, we, can we do that next summer, please? <laughs> we yes. can do it now. We can do it for Christmas. <laughs> I got chill. my trapper hat right here. What? He got me a trapper hat for my Are birthday. you going to model That's that for right. the camera? I I put it up on my... Uh, oh, I still remember when you squirted out of mama. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I thought he's, you guys were twins. He was, he's five Yeah, minutes. yeah, I remember it. I he's was first. Five, five minutes older. <laughs> uh, doctor lifted me up, spanked me, turned me around so I could watch old Dickie Dick come out. <laughs> yeah. I heard you almost dropped your dip. <laughs> uh, that's right. Jaw fell right to the floor. That's right. What a man he is. He dipped right out of his snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I like that book, The Snatcher in the Rye. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, That's man. quite a book. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Christy, where were we? Uh, Health officials in Canada. Canada. What do you think this had to it? <laughs> Hey, could, could we take oh, a picture of you it. in that? Because you're it's on the it's on his it's jo- on chicks Instagram. Josh, you need the green. chick McGee. If you want to go on that Instagram, oh, that is one okay. stupid looking hat. Oh, dude, trapper hats are the best. Oh, it's so warm. you need a green one. I can't one, wait for it. Really maybe. cold. I've got a couple. Do you? Yeah, I love got them. Got this snap on the bottom. They oh. really keep your face warm. They're that, amazing. Does that the front come down? The wind chill. <laughs> 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 yes, it does. We won't have to worry about <laughs> you won't have to worry about getting a venereal disease because those are vagina repellent. <laughs> Wait a minute, I can't hear you. What? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Even better. <laughs> Uh, you tell me if it looks stupid. What's the big flap know. with the fur in the front for yeah, you? Are you supposed to you, pull it down, but then you can't see? That's what I said. 
It doesn't pull down. Oh, it's that? just there for fashion, Tom. Oh. <laughs> okay, because that does look good. So you take this off there and it cuts you the You slaughtered some poor them. animal for that <laughs> stupid thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, right there. That's a vole. <laughs> <laughs> and then the chinchilla's in the back. Right, okay. I got hey, hey, hey. That's right. Jackie and Sarah and Monroe get ready. <laughs> Aquaman, I want you on the golf course in five minutes. Jump, jump. <laughs> hey, Superman, you're going to free bowl of super that hat or what? <laughs> Talk to the judge. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> The sign said anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what gives me? <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy's here and Pat, Josh Arnold, Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick. And here's our fearless leader, Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Underrated, that uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. <laughs> now, what brought that up? Here, um, rated just about where he it said fearless be. leader. Um, One of the greatest cartoons of all time. Not, cartoon. If, if you're not familiar with Rocky Bullock. One of the worst movies ever made. If I ever met Robert De Niro, I would say thank you for doing that. He, God, he was great in that. I know. And then he would go, uh, uh, Artie, can he get me out of here? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have no <laughs> doubt, but I'm just saying it. Uh, now, you said you had something interesting in sports? A man known as Kansas City Chiefs superfan, Chiefsaholic. You've seen this guy. He wears a wolf mask, and he uh, yes. he cheers. He's at all the Chiefs. Was at all the Chiefs oh, games. No. Uh, Chief Saholic has pleaded guilty in federal court yesterday to charges related to a string of 11 bank robberies or <laughs> attempted bank robberies of, of financial institutions in seven states. Quote, his violent crime spree across the Midwest and beyond traumatized bank employees and victimized financial institutions <laughs> in seven states. The defendant tried to conceal hundreds of thousands of dollars in stolen cash by using it to gamble online and at casinos, laundering the money. But he was caught uh, with uh, yesterday's conviction. He'll be held accountable for the full scope of his criminal conduct, including his flight from justice. Chief Saholic's name is Xavier Babudar, B-A-B-U-D-A-R. He's 29. He pleaded guilty yesterday. And here is... Chief Saholic's attorney, uh, Michael Merriman. Okay. This is him after the uh, the verdict. Uh, he's addressing the media and and speaking on behalf of his client, Chief Saholic. From the beginning of this case, folks, the government has been blitzing, and Xavier's pocket was collapsing. <laughs> but today, Xavier stepped into the pressure. He took responsibility for his actions. Oh he stood up in court, humble and repentant, and admitted what he had done. Repentant. Repentant. Did you did you hear what I heard when I heard this for uh, the first the time? The blitzing analogy? Mm -hmm. There's more. If I know anything about Xavier, and if the Chief's Kingdom knows anything about Chief Saholic, <coughs> We know that he doesn't give up. We know that if he stumbled and he fell, he didn't let his knee touch the ground. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh. Horrible. <laughs> he robbed banks. He threatened people's lives. And the, the uh, attorney's uh, trying to make him out a hero. God, what a genius. With the, football Is this analogies. attorney in the sixth oh, no. grade? Yes, he's, he's awful. Uh, yeah. Babadar, for instance, walked into a bank in Bixby, Oklahoma, demanded money, and threatened to shoot anybody if they didn't comply. Jeez. He posed a serious danger and a risk to the public. He's thankful, for, uh, the uh, U.S. Attorney Clint Johnson, thankful to uh, the judge. And here is one more from Michael Merriman. <laughs> this, is, this is the Chief of Hollock's lawyer. Chief of Hollock's lawyer. We still have a lot of work to do on his case. But Xavier wants everyone to know that he loves the Chiefs' kingdom. Oh. He loves Kansas City, <laughs> and he hopes that you'll rally to his support. 
And he loves what? robbing banks. He just loves it. <laughs> he just loves he, it. He's, he's, he's not going to give up. Uh, he's, he's blitzing. It's a third and long. Is he in jail right now? <laughs> yeah. Much like his lifelong he's... struggles with Chiefs a hall. <laughs> yes, yes. We you hope know, that he can. <laughs> he's like an alcoholic only for the Chiefs. That is, I can't stand Gosh. when people do that kind of thing. Oh, I'm a yeah, chocoholic. Oh, yeah, you. Couldn't go to work yesterday? Are you losing your family? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Under the terms of yesterday's plea agreement, Babadar must pay at least $532,675 in restitution to the victim's financial institution. Where is he going to get that? Yeah. He also must he forfeit. <laughs> he has to forfeit to the government any property involved in his money laundering activity, including an autographed painting of Kansas City Chiefs quarterback <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. That has been Cover, recovered by the FBI. Oh, how about that? Is he going to prison? Prison? Yeah, he's in so. prison now. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. God, yes. Babadar arrested shortly after all these robberies. Had a large bag in his possession, $139,000. I. This was just fascinating. Yes. How the lawyer has spun this and framed it. And come on, Chief's Kingdom. I'm surprised he didn't invoke the, the, the recent Super Bowl win. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, if you want that feeling again, rally to his, to yeah, Babadar's well, support. Yeah, the, the only ring he has is the one around his very sore ass right now. <laughs> 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 Which one was it? That you, the, but his knee did not touch the ground. I think it was this the second one. If I know anything yeah. about Xavier, <laughs> and if the Chief's Kingdom knows anything about Chief's Aholic, <laughs> we know that he doesn't give up. Yeah. We know that if Robbed more than he one stumbled <laughs> and he fell. Oh, here it is. He didn't let his knee touch the ground. Ah, <laughs> yeah. No just, reporter went, boo. <laughs> that guy sounds like a sixth grader. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, his, uh, that's his attorney. Embarrassing. There he is. Oh. Chief Saholic, oh boy. Yep, yep, oh, there yeah. he is. Well, God bless you, sir. And there's, uh, there's a documentary running right now on the ESPN. Yeah, about stream, him? About him. Does it include the bank robbery thing? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. A wolf Got just robbed our bank. <laughs> Poor guy. Does he, wear, does he wear the suit when he robs the bank? Apparently. Uh, no, he wears, uh, like, a. it's an elaborate uh, motorcycle uh, helmet, and uh, but you still can't see his face. His chief's holism is really out of game. He can't yeah. get out of bed without a... No. At least hearing, <laughs> reading one news story about the Chiefs. Yeah. He's a Chiefs of Holland. Uh -huh. yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> you go to the meetings. Yeah, just <laughs> why have, belittling. Why has uh, someone said, My name is Chiefs hey, of I'm a. Maybe, okay, we'll give you a chalk. Chocoholic. Yeah. That's that's comedy. That's fine. But how why do they get away with putting invoking alcoholism? Uh, yeah. I'm a shopaholic. Or do you just like shopping? Because <laughs> alcoholism's a pretty tough thing. Yeah. And it ruins lives. Some <laughs> yeah, people don't yeah. some people are uh, dying from it. Yes. Come on. Oh. How's your liver? Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, you just like sales. Man, oh man. <laughs> uh college football playoff officials are considering a 14 team model 14 teams now tom that would guarantee multiple automatic bids for each of the four power conferences starting in 2026 so wow. we had four for 10 years but you why, why should you get an automatic bid we're gonna have a winning the uh winning the conference term okay things right, like that asking. caitlin clark has another career record on her uh, resume the most points by any major college women's player to ever take the court Iowa superstar guard scored 33 to lead number six Hawkeyes a romp in Minnesota that moved one point past the amazing Lynette Woodard on the all-time list with 3,650 points. Woodard. All right, all right, yeah. all right. I got my drinks. I got my friends. I got my car. Clark, uh, her eighth three-pointer of the game to pass Woodard. And when it comes to the quality of the job site, I yes. think possibly <laughs> we might want to take a look at doing something like this. Mm. around here. Okay. A new survey from the National Football League Players Association ranks the Dolphins and the Vikings as the top teams in the league. More than 1,700 players participated in the survey, which asked them to grade their own teams on a wide variety of subjects, ranging from the facilities to the coaching staff to the owners to the food. Mm. The Dolphins were named the number one team followed by the Vikings. Wow. <laughs> the Chiefs were the second lowest graded team in the NFL. That's right, 31 ahead only 
the Washington Commanders at number 32. Oh. That's, that's a real statement. Uh, despite the low ranking, Andy Reid ranked first among the 32 teams so, in the head coach category. They're talking about like the cafeteria facilities, the, wa- the weight room. Yes. Categories, treatment of families, food, cafeteria, nutritionist, dietitian, locker room, training room, training staff, weight room, strength coaches, team travel, head coach, and owner. Oh. They're okay. all asked about those. Chiefs owner Clark Hunt. Clark, Clark what? Clark Hunt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Clark Hunt. Clark, pause. Give me a little air, okay? What? Clark well, Hunt. Uh, Clark. What is it? Uh, just t- 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 just take, take a breather after you say Clark. Like, maybe you'd say, like, Superman is Clark You know Kent. what? I didn't expect, you hear it, that? To, I didn't expect it to go that well. There's a... The, what are they no, called? it's Clark Hunt. That's what his they, name. What? Oh, what's wrong with that? Uh, it's Josh, Lamar Hunt's son. Clark Josh. Hunt. Josh, they they call that a beat, right? Oh, you, 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 man. In, in comedy, yes. in comedy, you oh, leave a beat in right. there. Right. Thankfully, uh, the man's nickname is uh, Clary. <laughs> uh, he goes by Clary Hunt, so you can start saying that. Clary, Clary. He doesn't Hunt. like the full Clark. He likes to be called Clary. Um, not Clark Hunt. Right? So, uh, Mr. Hunt, <laughs> he's uh, he ranked last out of the 32 team owners. Now that uh, Dan Snyder's out of the league, so the, so they, they they win a Super Bowl, and this well, guy is such Christy, a... you're laughing pretty hard. Why don't you try it? Go Clark ahead. Hunt. What is it? Clark. Hunt. Huh. See, there's a little pause. See, there, you have to, yeah. Remember the remember the famous uh, piece <laughs> on this show about the guy that liked to hunt for elk? Yeah, elk. Yeah, elk hunt. Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was a Spanish man. What am I doing? Man, he was a man of Spanish. I don't get it. Man of Spanish heritage. Yeah, we, we can't even play that anymore. Um, wow, uh, you really got me that one. What's uh, the name of uh, the, uh, her, his? is it his sister? Or uh, how does she... No, she is uh, also a hunt. I Ms. Think. Ms. Hunt? Ms. Hunt, a sister or part of the family. She also owns a portion oh. of the Chiefs. But Clark Hunt is the one who <laughs> runs pretty much the entire okay. operation. I got you, yeah. So With Lamar Hunt right. passing away. That, 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 Lamar that, Hunt, nice the AFL, that was, his, 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 <laughs> that was all his idea. Ah, was gotcha. Lamar Hunt. It's Lamar. His brother Harry is... <laughs> No, that's Harry Hunt. That's <laughs> yeah, Harry Hunt is like, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no it is no. Harry C. Hunt. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, no period. Like, like just like just like the, the Harry S. Truman. Right? And Clark, very, very uh, unusual. Yes. Clark Hunt's uh, wife's name is Helen. <laughs> Helen? She's in charge of the uh, Lost and Found okay. at Arrowhead Stadium. Oh. If you lose anything, you go to Helen Hunt for it. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Thank uh, you anything else uh, from the Players Association <laughs> survey of interest? Uh, uh, now, where were we? We were the oh, chief. oh, yes. Chiefs owner Clark Hunt uh, ranked last out of 32 team owners. The That's Chiefs amazing. ranked 26th in the food cafeteria category, 31st in nutrition and dietitian, uh, and th- training rooms 32nd. Ah. The Chiefs stand out because they ranked poorly in many of the same categories last year. Why haven't they, with all the money they're making yeah, the no Super joke. Bowl? Yeah, no But somehow they managed to win the Super Bowl two years in a row. That didn't slow them down any. Mm. Uh, the National Football League Players Association President J.C. Treader told Clark Hunt that maybe we could no, I'm making that part up. I think there's some frustration <laughs> coming back that, hey, we keep winning Super Bowls and nothing's coming back to us. It has been mentioned. All this success, how come our facilities? Yeah, can't yeah, be better? of course. There's three teams with F's in travel. Oh, F's in travel. F. Yeah, no, you're on a big jet. You know what? No, they, they tell them. Are they in commercial? If you want, no, they say they, if you want to get to the game, Shoe Leather Express. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's part of your training. Wow. Arizona Cardinals, for example, stopped charging players for meals, <laughs> changed the floors and equipment in the weight room, and added a small family gathering room for game days. Cool. You'd think they'd have all that. The they Bengals charged cr- them for lunch? <laughs> yeah. The Come Bengals on. criticized following last year's survey for not providing players three meals a day. Now offer three meals at the facility on Wednesday. Are they there all day long? Yeah. I, 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 there's no off-season, Christy. No okay. offseason. The Jacksonville Jaguars jumped from 28th to 5th overall after last year's survey found that players complained about, and we had this story, uh, rats in the Jaguars' oh. team facilities. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Big, yeah. big, 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 giant rats. Ugh. Wow. That is just awful. Uh, these places are swimming in money. Mm-hmm. You'd think that maybe they'd huh. spend a little bit of it on their team. Huh. Uh, um. Hope Taylor Swift doesn't get a whiff of this. 
Oh, yeah, she'll to write a song buy him about a whole, it. Yeah, I'll buy him a whole new facility. Yeah. Well, she's going, she can buy, the, buy a team. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, yeah, her, her boyfriend, uh, Travis Kelsey, plays for the Chiefs. I <laughs> bet mm-hmm. she's met Clark Hunt, I bet. Probably. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the owner, <laughs> owner of the Chiefs. Maybe she should write a song about him. Maybe Ooh, she could, could write a song called Clark Hunt. <laughs> you know something? <laughs> the Clark Hunt Chronicles. Okay, guys. <laughs> I still have a mortgage, okay? I don't His know. name's Clark Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Poor, the Marty, he's, 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 his whole life he's been getting tortured yeah, by Yeah, no joke. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Way to go on the hard consonant at the yeah. end of my yeah. name. That's I appreciate like Mike. it. Poor Mike's in the last name. Okay. Uh, now, uh, oh, is, is that sports? I haven't checked to see if he does have, have a brother named hey, Mike. 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 At least there you can go Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Clark. Uh, I'm Clarkson. <laughs> Just call me Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. Harry. Uh, Jetpack. And uh, more cold weather coming up in sports. Yeah, the Jetpack story is amazing. Nope. Nope. Uh, no, it's not. You don't. Are you kidding me? No, no, I'm not at all. These guys are, these guys are flying around. The thing that you find uh, fascinating, uh, not many people do, but we are soldiering on. We have huge crowds watching. <laughs> nope, that's <laughs> not true. Some guy. That's not 30, true. 30 people. Some, some guy. And where it's where it's held, I would imagine they made it uh, the law. You had to attend, I'm, uh, I'm guessing. Oh, or your hands got chopped off, probably. <laughs> okay, that's not really fair. Um, now, um, uh, also uh, coming up, we have uh, Loose Goats. Uh, cool news. Uh, you'll like this one, Josh. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Naked Gun franchise. Oh yeah. yeah. Getting the reboot, and uh, I think you'll be very pleased when you hear who is going to be one of the stars of that. Also, All right. we're going to feature a portion of our interview with Mr. Peter Frampton. Once again, it was so much fun. We'll play that for you in just a couple of minutes. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. I, I did a show at this dance club. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me. I don't like to dance. <laughs> The lady running the show, she was like, why don't you shake what your mama gave you? I was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to shake scoliosis and a low self-esteem, but... (laughs) There were black lights everywhere in that venue, on stage and backstage where I'm standing. And I was just doing the normal pre-show check, and I had a, a stain on my pants right here. I know, I felt the same way. Uh, what had happened was, uh... You know when you put your pants in the washer and you dump the soap in, it all landed right here, and that shows up under a black light. I didn't know that, and neither did anybody else. Because I was on stage, and everybody was like, oh, man, that is a lot. It was a capful. It was a lot. Uh, that's two loads, so... I think that's a dirty joke is because you're a dirty person. <laughs> it's a laundry joke. It's a clean joke. So. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Take a girl to dinner and she asks the major D for a better table. She's never going to be satisfied with anything in her whole life. That's one of the rules.
rules. One of the rules in here. That's Just go the to the bathroom and go right out the window. Uh -huh. oh, Leave uh, your car. Uh, buy another one. It'll be cheaper. Tom has one of those rules. That's one of the rules in this book. Yes. Yep. All right. Watch the way that a date treats a waiter, a waiter, waiter or waitress, or because that, staff, that's yes. how they'll treat you in three months. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the rule of thumb. Well, that's more about one of those people who you just can't please. Okay, you have a song about that? I have a song about that. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Took her to Hawaii. The waterfalls made my hair frizzy. <laughs> went to Vegas, too. The lights gave me a migraine. <laughs> then we went to Paris. I didn't like the fries. No one ruins love like you. <laughs> <laughs> Took her off to Rome. There were too many Italians. <laughs> Had the finest pasta. I don't eat carbs. <laughs> Saw the Sistine Chapel. That made my neck hurt. <laughs> no one ruins love like you. <laughs> The beach is of Tahiti. There was nowhere to pee pee. <laughs> Full moon up above. That was kind of creepy. <laughs> the finest hotel. I thought it was seedy. We met passionate love. I couldn't see the TV. <laughs> 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 the pyramids of Egypt. That made my skin dry. The Taj Mahal, too. That was too drafty. The leading tower of Pisa. I would sue the contractor. <laughs> no one ruins love <laughs> like <laughs> you. Air <laughs> hides inches. Well, that's only when you're naked. See, when I put King Kong behind closed doors, I want the ladies to notice a bulge that rivals those old Jim Palmer ads in Sports Illustrated. <laughs> Thanks to this, I can achieve that look in just a few short weeks. From the makers of miracle Grow, it's the Pubador. <laughs> the Pubador starts at the root system, giving your patch a major poof that only the latest in Frigamol technology can provide. Wow, chick. Is that an airbag in your pants? <laughs> or are you just happy to see me? Let's just say my curly fries have gone home style. Oh. The Pubador is a simple three-step system. First, apply the Miracle Mix to desired region. Place those puny pubes in curlers and then let the Pubador leave you high and dry. <laughs> Wow, it looks like a blooming onion. <laughs> the Cubador, now available at the Bob and Tom oh, Personal yeah. Care Outlet Mall. Warning, not intended for beards, backs, or buttocks. Ask for the Pubador by name. Pubador. Hi, this is comedian oh, Sean yeah. Maury, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I got one of those, um, yeah? you know, the calls on the phone, the uh, guy selling you something or trying mm -hmm. to get donation right he actually used this word is this the man of the house <laughs> is this 1952 <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. it is the man of the house. I'm, I'm lounging on the divan uh. with a highball <laughs> why do you insist on calling during edward r murrow <laughs> uh -huh. I'm serious. Come on. So I'm yeah. on my wife said you learn a lot about yourself if you keep a diary mm -hmm. and that is so true i've learned my life is brimming over with really boring activity <laughs> <laughs> and now one more writing in my diary <laughs> Thanks, honey. yeah you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on you realize it's not your girlfriend it's just a woman on a bus <laughs> that's how you know you're too high this is bob and tom 24 7 Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Good morning. Sailing right along, right? We've got Al Jackson coming up and also a comedian, Bill Burr. Yep. <laughs> All next hour. I think kind we're of sort of. Feature a little bit of our Peter Frampton interview from yesterday once again. We'll yes, sir. That. But right now, we return to the sports page with Chick McGee. Dubai hosted its first ever jetpack race this past week. Racers fired up their 1,500 horsepower jetpack suits before zipping above the waters of the Dubai Marina and dodging obstacles along the route. 
Now, because this is uh, story is written so poorly, I don't know if it's one of these jetpacks that uh, rely on water propulsion. You have no. to stay over water, hmm. or you can uh, fly anywhere in the jetpack. So you can fly anywhere. I wouldn't know well, because <laughs> the, you, the, the, it's uh, almost a baby on the link. A baby. That, uh, that no, writes <laughs> these are like the James Bond jetpacks back in yeah. the day. Oh, Look. there they are. Yeah. And the reason they're doing it over water is because um, one of the guys does crash. Oh, and, um, it's so cool. Do you remember Super Bowl one or Super Bowl two? I know it wasn't that. It wasn't much past that. I'm sure it was one of the first or second Super Bowl. They had a guy in a jetpack, and they, he looked just like uh, James Bond in the movie. Yeah, the, the technology has improved uh, a, a lot, quite but a bit. Still. You couldn't go very far in the in the original jetpacks. It was like uh, piloting a bomb, is what one guy said. Got yeah, and it's it, it, there's no wings. You can't glide to Earth. If, yeah. some, if something goes wrong, you come <laughs> crashing down, which is one of these guys did hit the water. He's okay. The jetpack suits can reach up to uh, 80 miles an hour. God, two, it'd be fun, though, wouldn't it? Uh, looks cool. Uh, I'd love it. Two, uh, two pilots bumped into each other during the race but remained in the air. Third pilot survived a crash to the water. It's, it's kind of got like a Harry Potter, yeah, you know, Quidditch kind of feel to it. It look, looks it's just amazing. Pilot Issa Calfin ended up winning the race and was awarded a golden jet turban. Oh. Now, would you rather watch this at the Olympics or badminton? <laughs> this at the Olympics or break dancing? I, I would rather watch the events... That are officially sancti sanctioned for the Olympics. Yeah. And Jetpack hasn't made it yet. Well, now, this is the international version. When they do it just for their home people, they add a skeet shooting to it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Makes it... That's more exciting. A lot yeah. more exciting, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Why aren't you more upset about... The, you're, you're really mad about breaking break dancing in the Paris Olympics. Why? Uh, the Winter Olympics has uh, the biathlon where they ski and they shoot at things. That's because it's based on a tradition. Well, so it was It's based dancing. on a tradition of hunting. Once we know we get we get back to the fact that you've pussified your life so much, you think all food comes from packages. You know, they don't just grow potato chips on trees. Farmers have to work to make those delicious potatoes. That's not Hunters, true. Hunters, uh, back That's in the day, again, 100 years ago, you would have been dead so many years already. I have the most gorgeous potato chip tree on the, my backyard. Do you really? Do you? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a barbecue. The, oh, nice. <laughs> the biathlon is based yeah. on what they would do back in the day, hunting. Skiing and shooting. And didn't they get rid of wrestling in the Olympics? Now they're adding dancing? Wrestling is a sport. I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, or it's entertainment. Yeah, it, I think it, it should be in the Olympics. In. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's not, but... I thought they... Did they finally put it back in? I can't I even don't know. Track. I don't remember. But dancing has more of a historical tradition than jetpacking, that's for sure. Yeah, but jetpacking is cool. Well, but, but the logic you're using is that it's uh, it's untraditional oh, don't when it comes to... No, I'm, I'm talking about the importance of aviation it. in our culture. L Josh. word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one could argue that dancing is more important to culture than aviation. Absolutely. Oh, sure, you could. I, I, I know that. You could make mm -hmm. that argument. Yeah, sure. You can communicate you can, you via dance. You can dance to Boston in three hours, right? <laughs> yeah, man. I think Denny Terrio is going to be our next president. Um, <laughs> Denny Terrio. Why did okay. that show go away? <laughs> <laughs> was it there are indigenous show? peoples who... Which one was that? Was that Solid Gold or uh, Dance oh, Fever? Dance Fever. Fever. That's it, Dance okay. Fever. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I, I think that it's, it's a real... Uh, uh, the, having breakdancing in the Olympics is ridiculous. Well, we'll have to see how it ends up. Yep, we will. Unless says, they, unless, says you. Unless no, but, they were naked. But listen, do, do you bring unless your own piece of card? Naked. Do you bring your own piece of cardboard and a boombox? Wouldn't you think that it would t take quite the rigmarole, if you will, to get something as a sport in the Olympics? And there was enough of people being excited about having breakdancing in the Olympics that it's there now. I know every high school proving every, your every theory high school, wrong. Every high school in America has a breakdancing team. Oh, I'm you sorry. Maybe they, maybe, they, maybe they have basketball. I said. Oh, boy. How do you think it got to be an Olympic sport if it wasn't I think popular? It was politically uh, correct pressure. World, worldwide to be it's an Olympic sport. It's all about sports. political correctness. That's what Is that right? Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> so there are some people who are naturally good at uh, breakdancing and some that aren't? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying it's about political correctness. You have any more sports over there, Chief? <laughs> you mean something interesting? I'm waiting. An Australian woman has set the Guinness World Record. Oh, yeah, I forgot this. Stupid. Okay. Miss Donna Urquhart. A Sheila? A Sheila in Australia. 
That's the worst Australian accent I've ever done. Uh, she ran the longest polar ultramarathon on foot. Miss well, as, opposed to, as opposed to, I guess, on her running hands? it on her hands. Yeah. <laughs> what a stupid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Reading it as it's clumsily written. <laughs> what? Ms. Donna Urquhart ran a total of 871.2 miles, 29 miles across Antarctica in 28 running days. God. The athlete and pain scientist. Oh, she's a pain scientist. From Melbourne is the first woman to ever attempt and complete such a challenge. In preparation for the record-breaking run, Donna and her team needed to simulate the cold and wind of Antarctica. I'm trying not to laugh because at the end of she, uh, the stories of the, the Melbourne woman is the first to ever attempt and complete his challenge. He's left additional information. <laughs> right I think it's fascinating. The story. <laughs> uh, for, in preparation, uh, Donna and her team needed to simulate the cold and wind of Antarctica. She moved her train to a commercial wind tunnel and a giant freezer, if you will, a cold Ooh. storage shipping container provided by Titan Containers. Why is that important? She ran on a <laughs> treadmill at 10 below for three to four hours at a time. And Can you imagine On weekends... That? God, no, I can't. Running on sand that mimics soft snow. I can barely. The whole thing's insane. I can barely. I can run from here to the green room. Yeah, and the, the more information we got on that story, the less I care. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? I don't know what to, I can't even pretend to and be he's, interested. he's labeled this as interesting. Now, I don't know what to do anymore. Now, what you're leaving out is the part about the polar bears. <laughs> yeah, there's that. I forget which <laughs> polar bears are where. Oh, they're, they're up north, right? They're in the Arctic. They're in the, yes. They're so in the she'd, Arctic. Get a, she'd get attacked by penguins. Oh, Canada? Yes. Right? Okay. She was in Antarctica, right? <laughs> yeah. That this means no bears. Totally crazy. Hey, what about an Uncle Arctic duck? <laughs> He's, uh, not, they don't talk about him. It was just National Polar Bear Day the other day. We forgot to acknowledge oh, that. I apologize. Really? Have to go out yeah. and shoot a polar bear. No. Um, Come here. You want a Coke? <laughs> I got Coke. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do this with a snowmobile. This, this, this is ridiculous. It's amazing. No. Well, congratulations. And man. so what did she get? Uh, Talked about on our stupid show. <laughs> okay, We're sorry. the only ones talking about it. Uh, Poor lady. Yeah, what did she get? She you get do a, all that work, I guess. She maybe she, cash prize. Maybe she landed a man. <laughs> <laughs> a man. Yeah, that's right, because that's what every that, woman that, wants. That's right. That's the ultimate prize. <laughs> a man to take care of. If that. she's a pain scientist, maybe she did it in because of the research involved. Maybe, maybe she'll she was, do it. Maybe she'll do it in the Arctic, and then she'll be bipolar. <laughs> No comedy there. Nothing. Uh, Zero. Yeah, just barely a sentence. <laughs> you know, granted, it is a pun. I'm, uh, I'm bi coastal. I'm bi coastal. <laughs> God. Remember when that word bi coastal became really popular? Oh, yeah. And you just want to shoot anybody that said that. <laughs> well, I, thankfully, I never talked to anybody. Who, I'm bi coastal. Uh, I really, yeah, I would have walked away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming up in sports? Not, not, nothing. Nothing. My, re my uh, resignation. Okay, coming up, uh, comedian Bill Burr, comedian. <laughs> And Al Jackson, a little bit of Peter Frampton coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom. LA. Uh, I get back to Kansas City. I was back last April for a wedding. Okay. And for a bunch of weird experiences, I become friends with Justin Verlander. He's a pitcher for the sure. oh, yeah. sure. Houston Astros. Yeah. At the time, he was pitching for the Tigers. Aaron Town playing the Royals, but they had a night off. So he and I went out and had a couple of drinks and. While we're out, he sees a young lady. He says, I think I know her. I think she's an actress. I think me and my wife hung out with her. I said, hey, man, we're in Kansas City. There's no way that chick's an actress. <laughs> she probably works at Cheesecake Factory or something. And he said, no, watch this. He calls the waiter over. He goes, who's that chick? And he goes, well, I don't know who the chick is, but everyone at that table is Mumford and Sons. <laughs> oh. They're here playing the arena tomorrow night, and they're here having dinner. Oh, so maybe it was Carrie Mulligan. Might have been. Yeah. I don't know who it was. But he sends them a bottle on us, he says, which... Meant him, uh, him, yeah. Because I'm not. <laughs> listen, if you're if you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars and we're hanging out, you're buying. <laughs> yeah. All right, sorry, dude. You fly private. You're That's buying drinks. Yeah. That is a good. Rule. I think it's fair. Yeah. 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 You yeah. know, he buys drinks. He doesn't even show up on his register. I buy drinks. I can't buy shoes next month. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. He sends them a bottle. They come over. Turns out it's not Mumford and Sons. <laughs> it's just Ann Sons. <laughs> Oh. Mumford wasn't there. I don't know where he was. I assume oh. he was back at the hotel writing a song that at some point goes, ah. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> and sons come over, start talking to the Detroit Tigers. I'm not really involved, so I kind of tune it all out. When I come back into focus, and sons are kind of talking smack <laughs> to the Detroit Tigers about beer pong. They're like, hey, we'll whoop your butt in some beer pong. And the Detroit Tigers are like, we get paid very handsomely to put balls places. Right. Uh, bring it. <laughs> so I said, hey, fellas, my parents live about eight minutes from here. Oh, boy. We could settle this. And I said that because I know both and Sons and the Detroit Tigers have an entire floor to do whatever they want. <laughs> so there's no reason to come to parents' house. It was complete fake hospitality. Right. Until they all turned around and looked at me and said, hell yeah, <laughs> let's go to your parents' house and play beer pong. And I went, oh, crap. Because <laughs> it is now 2 o'clock on a Sunday night. Oh. Technically Monday morning. Yes. My parents are not gypsies. <laughs> right? They have real jobs that start in like five hours. Yes. But I also can't look at all these dudes and be like, you guys, my parents. <laughs> so I just said, whatever. We're going to roll the dice, see what happens. Sure. So we get there. First off, as we're leaving, my sister texts me. She says, hey, I'm out and about. If you get home before I do, will you walk my dog? <laughs> I said, hey, unless you're out and about with the Dave Matthews band, you better get your butt home because it's about to go down at Mon Paw's house. <laughs> so we get back to my parents' house, start throwing beer pong, and stuff got weird. <laughs> like weirder than I've already described. Like my sister, who is 30, yes. ended up in her prom dress. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Oh, no. God bless her for still being able to fit in it, but also <laughs> the hell, right? So uh, we at one point in the evening, I go outside to partake in some uh, illegal activities. And uh, uh, I'm assuming the pot, not the pot, yeah, not, yes. not murder. Okay. No. Uh, well, not murder. we were going to see where it went. Sure. And uh, so and sons come with me. But uh, as it was the middle of the baseball season, the Detroit Tigers could not partake. Right. Sure. Uh, so they had to pretend like it was the playoffs and watch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, read an almanac. So we came back in from smoking, and my dad's downstairs, and he's upset. He's like, what's going on down here? And I said, well, this is uh, half the Detroit Tigers bullpen. And this is Ann Sons from Mumford and Sons. <laughs> and we're playing beer pong. And it was in that moment that I realized my father was no longer sure if he was actually awake. Because uh, <laughs> you got to look at it from his point of view. He walks downstairs. It's the middle of the night. He sees a bunch of weird dudes that he kind of recognizes. And my sister's in her prom dress. <laughs> like, things are weird. Yeah. And he's just confused. He's just like, uh... Uh, is that Justin Verlaine? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir, it is. He goes, I don't know what's happening right now. And he walked upstairs. That was the last we saw of him. Wow. He didn't say, is Kate here? <laughs> no, no, he was just like, what? And the whole next day, I'm freaking out because my parents do a lot for me. I don't even be making them upset over some stupid. Sure. Right. So uh, when dad gets home, I'm completely ready to take him out to dinner, buy him some drinks. And he walks in like he's had the greatest day of his life. And I say, what happened to you? And he's like, well, I woke up this morning and I hated you. Hmm. I cursed your name all the way to work. <laughs> but then I got to work and everyone started asking me why I look so tired and exhausted. So I started complaining about my son bringing home the Detroit Tigers <laughs> and Mumford and Sons and playing beer pong all night. And now I'm the coolest dude in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I drink her to me. My mom, my mom's Irish, so I always feel like ah, she's, okay. I, like growing up, it was weird because she's like she's Irish Catholic, so she's like super Catholic. You mm -hmm. know? And when it, <laughs> whenever we did something wrong, she'd like go off. She'd be like, she'd be like, "Who broke the fishbowl? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph." Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, my that. brother, be, my brother, be like, "Wow, we should go tell her it was us." <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, "No, we're not even one of the top three suspects. <laughs> we're not even in the lineup. We are. From, we're Catholic. Jesus wow. died for our." Sins. <laughs> he won't mind taking the heat on a fishbowl. Yeah. Then I went to see the Police in concert. Band. Great band, yeah. yeah. And Sting is guy. He's dressed like a rock star. But I'm noticing he has on his wrist 
a watch, and and not like a fancy watch, a watch. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at, do you need that as a rock star? You know, it's just, <laughs> wh where you got to go, Sting, you need a watch. Uh -huh. you know, you don't, I don't want my rock stars punctual. You know, <laughs> If you're going to make a date with Jim Morrison, he'd be late. <laughs> you know, what is he going to be in the middle? Is everyone ready to rock and roll? Hold on. Well, we better wrap it up in about an hour and 15. <laughs> I've got some stuff to do. The sitter is waiting. Are you ready to rock? I want my rock stars on heroin or dead, okay? That's a rock star. You're here. Not with a watch. Hi, this is Ross Bennett, and you're... Down. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hi. There's Josh Arnold. I learned something, and I'll share it with you in a second. That's oh, exciting. Good. There's Pat Godwin in the hey. performance room. Hey, Chuck. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's... Tom Griswold. Tom, uh, I understand Josh learned something. Tom, a lot of people I, uh, have written in this morning. I'll go about one. Um, I mentioned, uh, I quoted uh, Hank Williams Jr. earlier, and mm -hmm. I said I can uh, skin a buck and I can run a, I said I can run a trout line. Yep. Well, many people have uh, written in saying, it's <laughs> you idiot, it's trot line. Trot, like T-R-O-T? Yes. I, did you guys know that? No. Mm -mm. I did not know I that. Don't I, know. And I'll, and admittedly, I don't know what either one is. I don't either. Uh, okay, you kind of have like these buoys and you hang a line from them down under the water. And uh -huh. then it, there's a line that goes vertically and then there's a line that goes horizontally across, kind of sometimes from shore to shore. And then you, they have lining many the hooks. Oh. Uh, kind of. <laughs> many, many hooks. Like you can, you'll see it with like jugs as well. Okay. Uh, so you're basically fishing with 30 or 40 poles at the same time. Uh, 30 or 40 hooks on oh. one long line. Gotcha. Yeah. And we'll put shad on them to catch catch. And I always wondered, uh -uh. why did we call it what a you, What are you putting on them? Shad. Oh, oh shad. yeah. <laughs> just, just checking. I get it because after we had Mr. Hunt, but you get about bluegill. Say you know who who likes the shad fish is uh, Clark Hunt. Oh, he, he, is Mr. Hunt. Will you catch a bluegill on that too? Well, I no. Usually, you'll put the bluegill on there. No. Maybe oh. to get bigger. What cats. we were talking about. I was mentioning that uh, my girls had been uh, at their camp. They were tanning the height of a squirrel, and you guys were getting all upset. Oh, you feel like it's necessary to go all the way back to that? <laughs> Just to set it up. Why? Are you, uh, why, why, why? You why? really feel like we needed to set it up no. with that story? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah he did. He. You. Whatever you assume of him. And the value of setting something up, it's <laughs> much worse than you can imagine. Because here's the frustration. I, I'm I, had like, he, I had like five more words and the whole thing was done. Not, of course. <laughs> and he doesn't give the listener any sort no, of I'm assumption trying to make, I'm trying to of make intelligence. You, I'm trying to make you look less ignorant. No, so keep going. Oh, there's no way. That, that's, a, that's, that's a tough mission. Don't uh, put together. I love that song. It's You Don't know the song the... Country Boy Can't Survive? I do not yeah. know. Oh, yeah, that song. it's a great song. And I would wonder. Can't uh, turn it off fast. In my head, I would go, well, I've never caught trout on one of the. I, we always go for catfish. Right. <laughs> I, I fully, I get it. I was on the same How side. How far below the water is this trot feet. line? Uh, yeah, they always have to be uh, specifically 38 feet. No, I. Well, I mean, that's also false. Let's um, <laughs> no. I, 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 I promised. I promised we There's would. There's no specific, uh, okay. Feature a little bit of our uh, chat yesterday with Mr. Peter Frampton. It was really cool talking to Peter. He is once again up for the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can vote for him. How does that work, Christy? Go to rockhall.com/slash vote. Okay, here's what happened. Peter, <laughs> I want to get right to the important stuff. How's your dog? He's lying right here. Actually, uh, Bixby's right here. Bixby, come in. Bixby. Come here, come on. He's a Bixby is a black golden doodle, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hi, Bixby. Okay, good Bixby. Boy. What a good boy. See, I'm wrong. I thought Big I thought Bixby was your butler. I misread <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, Peter, is the name Bixby from the uh, uh, guitar world or the amp world? What is that? Yes. Um I kept um I ke wanted to keep it in the musical. Uh, circle. So, yeah, we use um, my very first tremolo arm was uh, that I got for my first Hofner guitar was a Bigsby tremolo arm. Oh. So uh, every guitarist will know what a what a Bigsby is. Yeah, it's a great name for a dog too. Yes. And is your dog officially a helper animal? Yes, he's a service dog. He's been in training over the last two years. He's going to graduate this year. It's it's a lot of stuff he has to learn, and um, so yeah, it's but he's the 
chillest dog you'd ever wish, you yeah, know. If you ever do the Framtone thing in front of him, does it scare him? If you go, please <laughs> hand me a bone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I have this great picture that I posted on um, IG that, that someone took at the... Um, um, Francois, one of our uh, crew, took at the rehearsal hall, and it's me playing and him sitting like 10 foot in front of me like his master's voice you know like oh, the oh, awesome yeah. big to thing. it's it's great so can I, you, I could see this this whole interview is going to be about my dog <laughs> no 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 so we, now when does he sleep don't mind. I don't know. <laughs> so oh sure we could ask all the other dumb questions uh what song did you have to replace the guitar on and frampton comes to life we know all that and we we've got bad news for you peter both tom and i have uh, listened to your audio book uh, do you feel like i do since we talked to you last and so we feel like we really know you up close and personal so uh no it's a great book actually oh it's really wonderful. And, and I guess the important thing, two important things. Mr. Frampton is going on tour again. Thank God we are so happy about that. And nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yes. a sure winner. We've been asking people to vote every day. Go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame website. Vote for Mr. Frampton. Uh, Thank uh, you so much. Obviously, well-deserved. I think it shocked a lot of people that you weren't already in. It was like, yeah. What? Wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, we should point out, uh, Peter is uh, dealing uh, in a very positive manner with a, uh, I guess, is, is the word disease? I don't want to count yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's a disease. And yeah. uh, can you give us the quick update? I, it looks like you're doing fine. No, I'm I'm doing great. I'm 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 surprised how well I'm doing and thrilled at the same time, obviously, because, yes, it is affecting my body. Um, and you know my muscles in my arms and legs and hands, but but it's it's so weird when I sit down. I can't walking is is a pain, um, obviously. But but and I sit down to play now. But uh, when I pick up a guitar, because these hands have been doing this for sixty plus years. Um, well, actually, sixty. Yeah, no, sixty plus years. Um, it, they they know what to do. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, um, if if I got one finger left, I'll I'll you know I'll still be playing. Uh, you know. Yeah, Django you know, did it with a couple missing, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, he yeah, he only had two. So yeah. <laughs> and um, look for Peter out there on the road with a great band. And I saw a few years back, and you had not lost a step. Although, as you pointed out, you are sitting, <laughs> which is cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. The last time I saw BB uh, King, it was at one of Eric's uh, special extravaganzas. I think it was the one in right. Dallas or Madison Square. I forget which one it was. And Eric yeah. and uh, brought up Mr. King, who sat down, and then Eric and the rest of yeah. the guys up front sat down as well. And of course, it yeah. was great. And BB King was the, the master of uh, fewer notes, more soul. Absolutely. And we were very lucky to have him on our guitar circus. He's. Uh, I, it's hard to say this in a sentence. BB King opened for me. <laughs> now, that, yeah. That's a that's a hard thing to even reconcile. But yeah. Um, yeah. it was one of his last tours, and um, it was close to the end. But he would invite me out, and I would sit with him like Eric did, um, and play "The Thrill Is Gone" every night. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah. And he was the most. Um, humble wonderful man you'd ever wish to meet he just it, it, you know when i first because i hadn't met him before the tour so when i first met him and i went on the bus and i said uh mr king he said oh call me b call me b <laughs> so um i said okay b <laughs> and um I said, would you, and, and I stumbled because I was nervous because he was, he's, he's a, the yeah. god of blues, sure. you know, and, and he said, Peter, 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 he said, you tell me what you want and I'll do it for you. And I thought, oh my God, this is, and we had the best tour. He was so much, well, he, he was dealing with some stuff, but, but um, we, it was a pleasure to be around him, always. And uh, Peter Frampton is our guest, and uh, Peter is, uh, besides being one of the greatest people in rock and roll, one of the nicest, else, why else would he talk to us? <laughs> um, I, I, uh, uh, Peter, when you, do you, are you still doing a traditional sound check, or are you doing the thing where they play a previous tape? And um, We start off 
uh, at the beginning of a tour, probably doing three, four sound checks. And then by that time, we've already done three, four shows. So um, we pretty much, um, when we leave the rehearsal hall, it's pretty much down, but everything changes when you play live. It's different, you know, so, but no, we, we, we don't like doing sound checks once we've got it down because we want it to be the first take every night for the audience. Yeah. Do you ever uh, screw around and uh, play uh, cover songs or screw up the lyrics that you're some of your classics just to oh, keep your sanity? Well I screw up the lyrics all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean during the show, sir. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, but now, of course, we've got this, uh, the scrolling prompter, like, oh, yeah. you know, like a newscaster. We've got, we've all got those now, so, um, uh, but y that, if you look away and, and you start to re rely on the prompter, it's like, <laughs> I, I think uh, your audience knows the lyrics to quite a few of the songs. They can they can always yeah. help. They can, they, always, they, they can always help they you fill, out. Fill, fill it in, yeah. Um, <laughs> one last question. Um, your your dad was an artist, and I remember asking you once if you had any of his art. And didn't you say that you had one of his ties still? Am I getting this right? A necktie? I have. I have a. Um, I have a sweater of his. Ah. That, that he would always wear. We tried to make him stop wearing it and wear something different because he had loads of sweaters, <laughs> but he just wanted to wear this one sweater. So that's the one I took. Um, but when I when I um, was up for an award and I did a um, <clears throat> an acceptance speech, I did say, we just lost dad at the time, and I did say, dad, I wore a tie. The last time I wore ah, a tie was, okay. I was at school. And I wore the tie, uh, um, and I, I just spoke to him, and I said, see, Dad, I wore the tie. I won. <laughs> uh, Peter Frampton. One of the funniest things I've ever heard Peter Frampton say is his favorite Humble Pie album is the first one he wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. I love that album. Hey, look, I got my favorites that, that I was on. I hope on so. His uh, and I, I always, uh, I always love uh, Rock and the Film, or one of the classics. And a bunch of oh, versions yeah. of that. They're all, almost all those concerts are now available out there in the world. Well, Peter, uh, can't wait to see you. Uh, be sure to look for Mr. Frampton on uh, the uh, tour schedule, and you, you can, can vote. vote. Rockhall.com. Tell them how. how is yeah. Rockhall.com/slash/vote. Okay. And you can do it every day. Okay. And apologize to Biggs, to Bigsby. We really wanted to talk to him. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, well, yeah, he's sleeping right now. Oh. And I did want to say, Christy, yes. you know. Uh, congratulations again, you know, because I did congratulate you on on the on the marriage. Oh, but thank you. you know, I was free at the time, so um, you know, <laughs> no, I I never got a call. From the oh, call. Peter, yeah. if you if you had any idea, kidding or not, what you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been under a year. I think I can yeah. get divorced pretty quickly. <laughs> if, if, if I read the book carefully known. enough, if I read the book carefully enough, I know the score is Christy four, Peter three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm in there with yeah, three. Yeah, we can go to Come Vegas, on. do it all. You can, get, yeah. you can get divorced and we can get married at the same time. Mr. Frampton, you, you remain the best. I'm and uh, uh, look for, forward to April 22nd. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Frampton's birthday. Yes. Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, and Tom not. Griswold's birthday. And Jack Nicholson. <laughs> the, the big three. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Three, Frampton. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. We'll see you on the road. Always a pleasure. That was Bye. Peter Frampton. We talked to him yesterday. And uh, Mr. Frampton is um, up and running and doing well. He's dealing with a pretty serious illness. But uh, so far, so good. I booked my flight to Vegas yesterday. Are you going to go see him in Vegas? I'm kidding. I was, uh, no, I'm going to marry him in Vegas, oh, you knucklehead. Nice. No, I'm going to see him in Gary, Indiana. Uh, yeah, Saturday, wait a minute. No, Sunday, he's in Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> then he's going to be, uh, among other places, Waterloo, New York, on the 9th of March. Uh, let's see. Oh, Hanover, Maryland, on the 10th. That's a Sunday night. Uh, lots of other spots, including Mount Pleasant, Michigan, I know, is coming up on the uh, yeah. 16th of March. That's a Saturday night. Uh, Gary, Indiana on a Monday. It's a hard rock, yeah. Uh, the 18th of March. Lots of shows. I would highly recommend his shows. You may have heard of that album, Frampton Comes Alive. Nah. Uh, which at one point outsold, I think, what was uh, what was the number one vinyl at the time? Uh, the Bible. Uh, the Bible. Very Dude. good, very good. No, it was uh, Carol King Tapestry. Oh, but, uh, anyway. that's a good album, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter's great, though. And he's yeah. obviously an incredibly nice guy. Uh, so, um, let's see. Uh, oh, coming up, we're going to talk with another nice guy. The very handsome Al Jackson. 
Uh, and also, Bill Burr. We got nothing but handsome guests today. Uh, the comedian Bill Burr will be our guest coming up. And right now, um, Josh has been educated this morning about uh, about fishing. And Josh has been educated about cheese. And he has learned that cheese not all cheeses are created equal. That's right. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese and Sausage is my new favorite. I believe it'll be yours, too. Give them a shot. Their famous squeaky cheese curds are made fresh in the morning and most often delivered to your doorstep in about 48 hours nationwide. And right now, you can take advantage of Gardner's Leap Day Sharp Cheddar Sale. Buy one sharp cheddar, get the next one 40% off. That's right. From the 8-year-old, 13-year-old, old and that 17 year old sharp cheddar enjoy any time after a long day serve it to your guests they pair perfectly with wine or your favorite beer this sharp cheddar sale is going on now through march 5th so don't you dilly dally this is a great time to stock up buy one sharp cheddar get the next one 40 percent off my personal favorite is the eight-year-old it's so flavorful go to gardeners wisconsin cheese.com slash bob and tom they've made it simple for you listeners out there try a little bit of everything with the bob and tom sampler package this is the perfect intro to all of gardner's most beloved products including that eight-year-old super sharp cheddar i was just referring to bacon oven baked cheese buffalo wing cheese teriyaki meat sticks garlic summer sausage and so much more you get some of that bacon oven baked cheese and some of that garlic summer sausage and some crackers you can make savory s'mores my friends mm. that's right that'll change your life my friends oh yes try them out i think you're really going to see the difference i know i did when i first had some garters wisconsin cheese i went well i've been doing cheese wrong for most of my life not anymore right now receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardenersWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. And use that Bob and Tom page. It lets them know that you came from us. Helps us out. And it's going to help you out because you're going to really enjoy what they have. That's GardenersWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. Uh, D delicious. Coming up, comedian Al Jackson, comedian Bill Burr, and um, uh, Naked Gun News. Yay! Also, Goats on the Loose <laughs> and a hilarious video we're going to point you to involving, um, uh, let's just call it a beer blast. Yeah, mm, that's that exactly. That knocks a guy in his ass. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob. <laughs> the 14-year-old whale great. named... It was amazing. Okay, sorry. Is it Wiki? W-I-K-I-E? There's not a... Is it wiki? Wiki, wiki, wiki. The, wiki. Sound, the sound that you make when you wipe a window? Ew. Wiki. Wiki, wiki, wiki. No, that was terrible. I don't know what According to the story, <laughs> wiki can say hello, one, two, aha, bye-bye, and even the name of her trainer, Amy. We have some of the audio. Amy. Uh, I'm we do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, this, okay, this, well, now that it's been suggested what they're saying, right, I mean, I that's what we're going to hear. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. this was on the new. I saw this this morning on uh, the TV. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, you must well, do very well. Toy toy you have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> it has, and mine has audio now. Whoa. Oh, boy. Uh, here we go. This is the whale talking. You be the judge. Here, um, mm-hmm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Mm. Hello. Hello. Oh, God. Hello. Chick- oh, oh, come yeah, on. Chick has his hand up. Yes. I'm leaving the country. This is creepy. <laughs> this is creepy. That's plainly hello. I've had it. This is, oh, man. so you are dep- definitely. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I think it's really making a good effort. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> but what do you want from a whale? It's like a parrot. <laughs> it's a parrot whale. It's a whale. Now, what par- the hell? Apparently, this is uh, better than the sounds they've ever been able to get out of a monkey or a uh, ape. I did see. I did hear that. Yeah. So wow. I, I guess and it's some, I think it has something to do with the. Uh, the structure of the whatever the wherever the voice box and throats the shape of the stro- throat. Gotcha. So, um, let's. This is once again. This is a whale. Wow. A killer whale. Now it's this. Am I right, Dean? This whale's in France. Yes. It's in France. I said that. So there's yeah, a slight in accent. Well, it should be bonjour then. It should it hello. be bonjour. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the maybe the U.S. is a bigger market for whale talk. Here it is again. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> you know, I, if you didn't know it was supposed to be hello, 
I don't think he'd be going, oh, hey, that whale just said yeah, hello. Yeah, I to don't me. think. No, you wouldn't, yeah. But it's. And pretty... I don't think he knows to walk, when you walk up to say hello. I mean, oh, maybe just, it does. And he's just mimicking what the trainer but, says. But I mean, think about a parrot. Have you ever been around some of these birds? It's amazing. Yeah, this is pretty yeah. primitive. Hello? Ah! Hello? Jeez, get, get an exorcist. <laughs> oh, that last one sounds like a wet fart. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, here's this, this is more of it. In the, okay, here we go. This is supposed to be a killer whale talking. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> oh. Wait, no, wait a second. Oh, I right. can't take it. <laughs> no. Come on. No. Are no. you making us sit through this? <laughs> no. This is science, Christy. Okay, no, it's not this all is pretty. Ridiculous. That ain't one, two, I'll tell you that. Let, let <laughs> it might be two. <laughs> yeah. We it, may have had two. Let it let, like, let it let it breathe for a second. Oh, okay. It, there's more. Okay, here we go. One, two. <laughs> Hey, I am just playing like this whale. French no, scientist. It, so, it sounds like it sounds like the whale farts and then yeah. gags yes. because of his own fart. Here right. we go. There's more. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. <laughs> These are nothing. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice story. Those, the whale is just, You know what this sounds like? You know what would be funnier? If Mr. <laughs> you know the famous British comedian? Uh, Mr. Uh, Bean? Mr. Bean. That's what this sounds like. Oh. And Mr. Bean can hear everything the whale says. This is this was a story the whale on the sea news this morning. My stomach hurts so bad. It's just, it's just making a noise. It's just yeah. making noise. It's just making noise. I'd voices. give you maybe hello, but that's just about it. Yeah. Listen, please play the first one, it too. It sounds like an armpit <laughs> fart. Here we go. Hello? hello. Now that we buy. Yes. Hello. I said hello. Hello. Yeah. hello. That. Jeez. Hello. Tom. Hello. Where are you with the senior Wences stuff? <laughs> We've, I've, I have to hear that first one. Here we go. Once again, this is allegedly a uh, this is a killer whale <laughs> speaking in uh, France. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> so this is you know this reminds me of <laughs> this reminds me of talking to my friend's grandfather. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Tune in to Bob and Tom TV and see why she's called the Bitchlerette. She's on the prowl and she's got... Shut your hole and bring on the rich numbers. Uh, on Bob and Tom TV. <laughs> well, there you go. There's a show I'd watch. Yeah. yeah. Hi, you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. This is Jim Gaffigan. Eyebrow dandruff. That's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> Is that a thing? I'm not proud of it. There that's, that's why would you, why would you bring that up on the air? That's I just... didn't. It was Christy did. It was said in oh, confidence off sorry. the air. Yeah. Don't ever say eyebrow dandruff in front of a potential lover. Oh. oh. oh okay. Hey, look, ladies. If I'm on top, you might get sprinkled on. <laughs> well, let it snow. If you're on top, well. I'll just let everybody else finish that. Oh, I see. Oh. If you're on top, you got about eight eight seconds to live. Is that it? I wouldn't say eight. If you're on Top Godspeed to your ribs, <laughs> ladies. Is that what we're getting at? <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here in our places with bright, shining faces. Your hair's all mussed up there, Chief. Huh? You want to fix that, please? <laughs> fix my. You want to fix my hair, Tom? I have hair on the top of my head. Your thoughts? Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Go ahead. Jeez. That was a shot. He started it. That was he did. He, that he was, did. That was there was an incident in the bathroom. That was Someone witty. went in before me yes. and fouled the area. Oh. oh. And I'm wondering who it was. I'll, I peed in the uh, women's room this mm -hmm. morning. Uh, just now, rather. Who was in the men's room? This spring. Not I. Not, Not I. Um, now it's time for us to. Ah, there we go. Holy it's, hell! We're checking in with uh, with comedian and television host from the DBL, the Daily Blast Live. He is Al Jackson. And uh, he's wearing a two pocket shirt, just like you. Al, Tom. is that one of my shirts? You got a, like a blue jean two pocket shirt. <laughs> oh, on it right looks now. velvet to I, me. I it, look for as much as uh, you know. We've been doing this for a while, Tom, and you know, yes. Are the streets talking? Is everybody saying, wow, Al, you've had a real impact on Tom? And that happens every day. And I say, yeah, I have. But you know what, Tom? You've had an impact on me. Mm -hmm. And I am definitely starting to dress 
uh, like a famous animal trainer now. <laughs> and I, I feel nice. like that's, that's my look. I got the two pockets. I have... Uh, I am definitely in my Jim Harbaugh phase where I'm wearing the same thing almost every day. I bought this, and there's also uh, pants to go with it, and uh, I have it in almost every color, and I'm almost I'm almost down to one uniform, like the Starship Enterprise. Yeah, it's a lot easier in life. What is the rule? Like, I have it this. Is. Uh, I have a denim shirt. It's a darker denim shirt, but I always wear jeans, and they're not dark denim. They're just regular denim. They're not stolen ones. I feel stupid wearing a dark denim shirt with uh, lighter with jeans. jeans. With any, yeah, with uh, yeah. you know, it's like the Canadian tuxedo. Yeah, yeah you got to right. wear black jeans if I you're wearing a black, de denim shirt. Or yeah. like a khaki shirt, would that work yeah, out? Yeah, that'd be or, fine. That'd be fine. Or, or khaki pants. Yeah. I think I think with the rules of fashion, you're okay, chick. I think yeah. the Canadian tuxedo comes in when the jeans and the shirt match. Right, I think so, too. Because yeah. then yeah. that's like okay. a... a Okay, well, these would definitely okay. not match. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. Now, right. uh, Al, um, this happened to me the other day. I was at the gym, and uh, I asked the guy next to me oh, geez. what kind of shoes he was wearing. <laughs> Poor bastard. <laughs> uh, bless his heart. The guy had to put up with that, huh? Yeah, because our shoe expert's chick, and anything about shoes he gets mad at. Is it cool to say, to say hey, those are cool shoes. What are those? Do you, now, would you do that? No. No? Be I don't. No. No, no of course not. not. At the gym. You mind your I just own feel business. Like the, yeah. Yes, the gym is this weird place. It's like there's it wasn't, a... I, but there's it, was not, it was not in the locker room, by the way. It was in the gym part of the gym. Yeah, Wait. but I know what yeah, Al's going to That's say. even worse. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's worse because the gym is the only place where I will... If I see a guy shoot a shot, even if a woman is on the street and he's in a car, which is a creepy scenario... Look, if you see, that's how sometimes you meet your wife. You say, hey, the, the, you know, I know this is weird, but I'd love to take you out, whatever. The gym is the only place where I don't think there should be any talking because you are totally. working out and you are on some kind of high and any kind of distraction from that. Like the gym is like a lot of people's only time. And so I think a guy hitting on a woman in the gym is the worst place to do it and besides maybe a wake and a guy <laughs> talking to me about my shoes <laughs> while I'm on the bench press trying yeah. well, to... He wasn't to on the bench press. He was die. just standing there. And he said, those look cool-looking shoes. And Well, why did he reply? Did he shut the conversation yeah. down or did he continue? Uh, the no. In fact, I'm, I'm looking up right now. I, I, he said they were called APL. Is that a thing? Well, I don't know. No. What are, you, what are you wearing? Was, what kind of uh, I sneakers are you wearing now, I've never heard of it. These are just, uh, I get my, t uh, these are my workout sneakers I get from Timu. These are definitely some knockoff Japanese oh, okay. uh, sneakers. Everything I get is from Timu. I, what, you just I like garbage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Timu is the same stuff. It, you know what it is? You know what it is, Josh, if you want to get right into it. Amazon, here's what you're paying for. You're paying for the box, bro. Timu comes and it looks like they just sent you a brick of cocaine. <laughs> it is just in a, it is in a brown rectangular box. It's in a bag. It, but it's the same thing. Amazon, you'll get like the a nice shirt or it's like folded nicely. Like Timu's like, take it. Here you go. <laughs> and so there's you you just you're it's like the Spirit Airlines of ordering stuff from online. It's the same stuff. It's just packaged horribly. I, if, see, I found that it's not the same stuff. That it's it. it if T Moo could, versions if yeah. T Moo could put a guy in a car and screech up to your house and throw it out the window <laughs> and, and scream away, they would. Now, That's exactly. Al, the I don't know if you read Absolutely. this. I don't know if you talked about this in your TV show, but. Um, uh, Timu ran the same, I want to say four, was it four or five ads during the Super Bowl? And the ad was voted the worst ad. But then I was reading in a uh, advertising magazine that it was considered to be one of the most effective because they had such a big uh, bounce the following, whatever, 24 hours of so many people looking into seeing who they were. So I guess I think the annoying most advertising. The disturbing thing from that, I, I think the most. The disturbing thing from that anecdote is that you were reading advertising magazine. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I if I saw somebody reading that, I'd be like, "That's definitely a cop." There's nothing on <laughs> those pages. Now, by the way, Al, I looked up these, like <laughs> these APL shoes. These are super cool. Oh god, oh, god. they must AP be uh, 
and some of these are like two hundred. Wait, but bucks. APL does that stand? Does that stand? I don't know. I just it sounds like I, oh, a, wait, yes, it does. Athletic Propulsion Labs. What do you think of these, Chick? You're the shoe guy. I'm looking right now. Um, well, Christy, you'd like these? They come in all kinds of pastel colors. Oh, they're, they're better than the ones you you've girl. got on right oh. now. <laughs> you are a girl. You like pastel? They're. All right. Al, Are they bad, Christy? Uh, Tom has been driving um, me crazy for the past, it seems like, six months about these on-cloud shoes. He's found these, and he absolutely loves them. They're very Boy, comfortable. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking them up now. and The but, trainers yeah. aren't bad. They They're, look pretty cool, actually. They have some nice colors. My, yes. my trainer recommended these shoes, so I'm, that's why I'm working with them also. Uh -huh. Oh, that's important then. Well, yeah. your trainer that recommended a, a guy blowing you off at the gym? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, glad you had it off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you I much, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break here to get some water. I can't help but notice. <laughs> <laughs> wearing those on-cloud shoes. Those not again. Nice. So, Al, you I not, need you, another you, APL. <laughs> you, you are not a so-called sneaker head. Uh, and typically, I am. I, uh, I, I I almost never wear athletic shoes. Although lately, I have been. I've been wearing leather shoes for a long right. time. But uh, yeah, I'm, I suddenly yes, am wearing these all the time. Sneakerhead is, it's 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 the cool way to say that you're a shoe guy. And it's w weird because women for years, it's always been like, oh, you ladies in your high heels. I know five guys for every woman that are obsessed with shoes and have been since we were in middle school, high yep. school. Yep. You know, the Jordans would come out, they'd go get them in f literally, Tom, three different colors. Yeah, I, I have a friend, who's a, a, a friend of ours uh, is a shoe guy. I mean, sneakerhead, whatever you want to call it, Scott. He's yeah. insane. He, he buys, he has shoes that are boxed that he's never opened. Oh, They're, you mean like action figures or something? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm serious. What's he do with them? He's a collector? They're, it's an investment. Excuse me, did you say a friend of ours? Friend. Oh, he really will? Will he flip them? You know. I mean, yeah. not, not do any work to him, obviously. But, but the person who has the most shoes around here is Chick McGee. Uh, What's the matter? Nothing. I mean, you've, you've had hundreds of pairs of sneakers. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, you gave a lot of them away. I, 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 I'm ready Chick to give a dressed like more. an AAU coach. I do. <laughs> I And, you know, I uh, Air Force Ones. That's all I, uh, I try to, that's all I wear. But also I the wear. AA is appropriate because he should be sitting in a circle. I'm a shoeaholic. Hi, Chick. <laughs> <laughs> How I mean, does that? Th th there's got to be some. To that. See, <laughs> it's a callback to earlier I, I, in the Chick, show. I, I feel like he's the closest one because you are down with the Adidas tracksuits. You could get away with. That's my goal. Give me like fifteen million dollars, and I'm getting twenty Adidas tracksuits, and I'm never wearing anything else again. I'm wearing that to like my daughter's wedding, and I feel like you're almost there, Chick. You could just rock a different color Adidas tracksuit. Get like. Ten of them and be done. I don't like the different colors. I like the black and the white, and maybe a, a charcoal, maybe a gray. I oh, you don't like color? Uh, doesn't like red doesn't and the blue. Uh, Al? Uh, you help okay. me here from a fashion standpoint. Doesn't the Adidas uh, track shoot traditionally come with a dookie rope? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it, yeah. I wouldn't say tradition. <laughs> I wouldn't say traditionally. Uh, of course. Uh, I, now, could he get away with that? Absolutely. No, I, I, I mean, it's. I don't know if people. It would be more the herringbone chain. With diamonds in it, I think that would be the updated, uh, the updated look. I think Chick could pull that off. Now, uh, well, uh, it's I don't think Tom could, but I, maybe I could. What no, do I, I don't. Tom? I don't wear sweatpants. I don't own any. I hate them. He hates sweatpants. Yes, hates Al. them. Hates them. Do you? You've had like a real issue with sweatpants that goes beyond like just personal taste. It's like something happened. Yes. To you I don't. I don't. I don't own a you soil some in front of. Somebody? I don't know. I, that's a fair question. I also, Al, I hate sweaters. I don't own a Speaking sweater. Speaking of things you're keeping in your closet, <laughs> yeah. I don't own any sweaters. I would never wear one. I hate them. And I think when I see those sweaters. Those sweaters? Those sweater vests, I think you just give up. Take out the rifle and get it over with. No, they, some of them are very attractive. <laughs> Sorry. Gosh. Would you just sweater as a joke, no, like, like the sleeveless yeah. sweater? Uh, you know, what's, what's what the do you mean, like a vest? Like a sweater vest? vest? Yeah, the sleeveless ones that... Uh, they're sweater vests. Pull over. Oh, this is ridic the, the ridiculous. Guy, remember the guy, that, the guy that does the commercial where all the people are acting like their parents? Yes. He's got one of those on. It's over when you're wearing one That's of those. That's not true. Yeah. There are some very stylish sweater vests. Okay, great. Not for me. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody can pull off the sweater vest. Al, we, we only have a couple minutes. We pulled off the sweater vest. We, we have to we have to move okay, forward we'll, here, Al. We'll you got to help me with my vocabulary for today. What have you got? <laughs> Evidently, we're table. All right, Tom. Let's get to our first one. Uh, I think we've had this one before, but I love it. And it needs to be part of your vocab. Tom, what does the the word curve mean? Curve. C U R V E. Curve. Oh, um. Like curveball. 
Yeah. yeah I, is this a reference to um, uh, the buttocks of an attractive woman? She's got the curve, baby. <laughs> no. That's okay. a good guess. Okay. Um, That's a great guess. Cause she we got were, that curve. Because we were looking at the um, at the uh, at the, it's, it's the singular. The, uh, what is She's the word? She's got a curve and she knows how to use them. Uh, right. what, is, what is the word, Josh, for the woman you were looking at before that's in the news involved with this football player that knocked her over and broke her leg? Oh, Al, did you see oh, this? Oh yeah. Tyreek Hill Sophie was uh, Hall. No. insisted on giving uh, football lessons in his backyard to a mother of one of uh, his attendees at his camp. And she was no, uh, she didn't. she's six one two fifty. She's a uh, and the, and the two fifty two hundred is ass. Uh, oh. She's an influencer, <laughs> and Tyreek was messing around with her. I'll send you a picture. And she brought it one time and almost knocked him down. So he got pissed, shoved her, and and she ended up breaking her leg. She's suing, <laughs> and she's an influencer. You, you got to have this on your show, Al. You can oh talk about God. this. Yeah. This is uh, uh, everything I just said. But is true. as Absolutely. I learned from you, uh, babies got back. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Were we hanging out in 2001? <laughs> oh, that's that's late. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. That, that was nostalgia that's, yeah, that's in 2001. <laughs> Maybe it's got back as 89, probably. Yeah, yeah. Why? No, curve is just. It's not a good thing, Tom. Curve is just. Oh. If you think about. Uh, like the show, like uh, the the movie The Last Airbender, you know, where they could move things and move out of the way. It's just like curve is just like if uh, some guy it, comes up to a woman at the bar and it's like, you know, leans and says, hey, can I buy you a drink? And she kind of, you know, leans away and says she's not interested or like, oh, my boyfriend's in the bathroom, even if he's not. Like, that's just a way to curve. But like, oh, she curved me. She told me to basically oh, a nice yeah. way to say, like, okay. you're getting getting me away from you. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So okay. yeah, yeah. I tried to hit on Christy Lee. I didn't know she was married until, I mean, she clearly was curving me all night, but I didn't know what it was. So mm. it's just like a, a nice way to deflect attention. Ah. Oh, that's good to know. Very, very handy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Al, I want you to look into this incident. It needs to be perfect for your show, The Daily Blast Live. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Okay, Al, we have time for one more very quick and see if I see if I can get a winner here. All right, Tom, let's get let's, let's go out with a winner. Uh Tom, what is uh when the kids text each other the word delulu? <laughs> delulu, oh, which I love. How do you spell that? Delulu. It? That's a great word. D E L D E L U L U. Uh is it uh, the traditional like that was a lulu? <laughs> Oh, like that step is a real loom yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that, that you say it. Wow. Maybe it, like it might be derivative from that, actually. Something that was extraordinarily uh, difficult to do, and wow. It doesn't just mean you're delusional? O over the top. That's exactly what it means, Josh. Okay, yes. yeah. It's... It just means you're like, oh. uh, Josh thinks he could beat a WNBA player one on one. He's so delulu, but he's weird as he can. Man, there was this this ten at the club the other night, and she kept curving me, and I was like, oh, she must be uh, curving me because she thinks she's way below me and doesn't have a chance because I'm so hot. And so, oh, that's the perfect so, example of a delulu. Uh, yeah, she's you know she's delulu. Josh, you're delulu, yeah. man. Yeah. That's very. Oh, then people would go, Josh, you're delulu. Yeah, she was curving right. you because to incorporate them both is genius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be watching for Al. Al, we got to check out here. Uh, be watching for Al on the daily blast live on a tv near you love you guys see you, Al. See you man I, I like the shirt it's very tom like <laughs> uh now um uh, this portion of the bob and tom show is brought to you by our friends at better help better help uh has a really good idea how about uh, simplifying something that's very important taking advantage of contemporary technology in a way to um help yourself i'm talking about therapy and uh, accessing therapy can be uh, difficult, and you've got to get in the car, you got to go there, you got to find somebody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. BetterHelp has uh, found a better way. And what this is all about is uh, helping you help yourself and uh, taking advantage of some free time you may have, maybe an extra hour in your day uh, or an extra hour in your week. You never know. Uh, but here's the point. You take a quick little quiz fill out a questionnaire, really. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist, one of uh, more than 25,000 therapists participating in the program. You can switch therapists anytime, no charge. And uh, what it's all about is being able to do the therapy online, which simplifies everything. You don't have to get in your car. You don't have to drive somewhere. It's not done face-to-face, -face, although you can do it like a Zoom call, so it is kind of face-to-face. -face. You can do it like a phone call, just like you're talking or listening to me right now, or uh, even texting back and forth. It's all about what suits you. 
helping you become the best version of you and uh, making your uh, mental health a priority. And again, it's about the simplicity of being able to have your time and be in charge of your time and have a schedule that is much more flexible and easy for you. See what I'm talking about. Check out BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today. That'll knock 10% off your first month. I'm talking about BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. And this portion of the Bob and Tom Show is actually sponsored by BetterHelp. Thank you very much. Coming up, we have comedian Bill Burr. Also, we have... um, a interesting thing yesterday, we talked about Wendy's and their CEO kind of uh, getting people really upset. Oops. Now Kellogg's is doing it. <laughs> Although I got to say, I kind of, I'm a fan of, uh, of breakfast for dinner, but we'll talk about that in a minute. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Larry, the cable guy. Larry, good morning. It's good to see you. But I, I gotta tell you, I, was, I had a horrible nightmare. Last night? Last night. Really? Before I come in here, I dreamt I drank the world's largest margarita. Uh-huh. And uh, woke up this morning, they were salt on the toilet lid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't eat the worm in there. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> I was madder than a skinhead watching the Jeffersons. I tell you what. I tell you what. The airport has got like magical powers. The airport's the only place where like you could be on the floor eating a salad. <laughs> and somebody will come up to you and ask you to watch their most precious things. You know, like, Can you watch my back and my kid? <laughs> Name A Jackson, you know, slot 32B or whatever, and you just go find your car. And I went there, and you know, um, um, 29, 30, 31, and then there's no 32. It just started with another rental car. It's like, I know I can't ask, like, where's 32 after 31, because they might not let you take the car, you know? <laughs> Eventually, I went and asked, I was like, hey, ma'am, uh, there's no 32, it just, there's just budget. And she goes, oh, we merged with budget, so that's an Avis car, so you just take that. I should have just taken the car on the off chance that there was a corporate takeover or wasn't. <laughs> and then maybe drive to somebody's house and break in and go to bed and hope it's an Airbnb. What are you talking about? Like, the Olympics are my favorite four years because they give that stat every four years about how many condoms they hand out at Olympic Village. <laughs> this year, we gave away 618,000 condoms at Olympic Village, and every time I hear that stat, I'm like, why? <laughs> Those are our best people. <laughs> be perfect. It'd be good on the land and the sea. It'd be like a, a first human Range Rover. What are we doing? How about we start handing out condoms at Storage Wars meet and greets? I'm a basketball fan, and he said, like, uh, if everything works out perfectly in the next three years, LeBron James and his son will be in the NBA at the same time. I was like, no, oh, that's cool. But then I did a little math of my own, and I figured out that in six and a half years, me and my daughter's student loans are going to overlap.
How many times have you been auditioning for like a civic theater production or a Broadway musical or a church show or a school show or something like that? And you had a great audition, you sang a song, maybe you told a joke or two, and then the director comes up to you and says, oh, Great audition, kid, and uh, your resume looks good, but uh, do you know any pig Latin? <laughs> You'll never be caught in this position again if you enroll now in... Haji's Academy of Theatrical Arts in Pig Latin. <laughs> At Haji Academy of Theatrical Arts in Pig Latin, you'll learn to act your way through some of the world's greatest theatrical masterpieces, and you'll do them entirely in Pig Latin. Things like Death of a Salesman. Oh, at, yeah, oh, nay. Ad day. oh nay. I may a yeah, umbe. Oh, nay. Umbe. Okay, okay. umbe. Old reruns of Hogan's Heroes. Ink clay. Oh, yay, idiot, yay. Oh, yay, ice ray. Enroll J. Orkalter Bay. <laughs> And of course, uh, uh, the classics uh, uh. of Shakespeare. Ute Ibe. Or ye, atne, Ute Ibe. At they, is ye, a ye, eschenque. At the way, a ye, There's still some financial scholarships available for women aged 18 to 25. Let me teach you to act in big Latin. For more information, write to Haji or phone 1 800 Akshme. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I, I recently got married. and a uh, boy. Yeah, and my wife changed her name. I know some women have a problem with that, but I wanted her to have my old girlfriend's name. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. really love you. Uh, Hell, you got the tattoo. Why not? <laughs> My wife actually got pregnant on her wedding night. Oh, oh she did? Yeah. Oh. Not by me. Oh. Oh. Uh, crazy <laughs> night. But either way, I'm getting a brother. So. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I don't think her parents like me, though, because apparently when you uh, meet someone's mother, you're not supposed to hug her and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom. What? <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, everybody. Here's Tom. <laughs> How you doing, Tom? Doing great, thanks. Good. Um, now, we have Christy Lee at the news desk. She has not been able to get a lot of news in. No, it's okay. Do you guys think that the phrase shut up is, uh, I, I feel it's woefully underused on news programs. Oh, certainly. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know why. They're so nice to each so other. They're so vehemently disagreeing. Yes. You know, a lot of these these right. uh, pundits and stuff, and they're, sure. and they're just going after each other, but they don't ever... It was like, well, you know, my friend over there said, well, just go, well, you shut up. <laughs> that was, I think, the beauty of, to me, one of the classic Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Live. Lives, yes. Is that they actually did it. With yeah. Jane right. Cotton, where he would say, Jane, you ignorance lot. Right. right. That was such a classic bit. Where you just take discourse to the lowest levels, but it's already so low. They might, I don't know why they're not just going, well, will you shut up? Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I guess it was said at the last presidential debate, though. One of the, you know, in 2000. I thought you were going to say, I, I guess it was said at the last Where summer. a presidential <laughs> nominee told the other candidate, Judas, will you shut up? Shut up? Yeah. yeah, it was classic. But I, 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 as a parent, <laughs> as oh. a parent, shut up is almost worse than some of the curse words. Of course, yeah, yeah. And oh, that's if, what, the, if that, a child says it to you, or you if, you, if If you hear one of your kids to tell someone to shut up, that's... Oh, I see. You know, we don't talk that way. And then they right. go, Daddy, you talk that way all the time. Well, that's because I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> now you shut up about it. Don't do as I do. do as I do. Um, yeah. There's that song that was a big hit song last year, Shut Up and Dance. Yeah. And I was really surprised. There's that kids channel where they take real songs and have little kids uh -huh. sing them. Kid Bop. Song. Kids Bop, yeah. And uh, yeah, they left the shut up and I thought they were going to change it to like be quiet and dance i was very surprised they also that. left in the kids bop all the lyrics to whap yeah which I thought was yeah. Really, oh, yeah. Really, yeah. yeah really yeah. troublesome yeah. yes and their yeah. version of why don't we get drunk and screw oh, <laughs> just, just unfortunate yeah I, I, how those poor kids they're never going to recover i'm sorry christy we still haven't let you do any news what's happening well the story that we were going to um 
push you to the internet to look at is this Minnesota brewery. They have a video out there of one of its brewers getting blasted and drenched with beer following a tank malfunction. Oh. It's um, Back Channel Brewing Company in Spring Park, Minnesota. A brewer named Brendan checking a large stainless steel tank. A valve appears to break off, causing a strong stream of beer. A nice pale ale, by the way, if you're uh, asking. Oh, I love pale ale. To blast out of the tank and hit Brendan, launching him across the room. You know, imagine, just to give you an idea, imagine if someone turned a fire hose on. Yeah. It's, it, it's not trickling. It is a blast. It hits him right in the chest. I mean, smack dab. Oh, and it knock you over. And, and no, he, gets, goes, he goes flying. Yeah. He quickly gets back up and tries to plug the hole while other employees try to help. Um, the blowback New England IPA from the tank is available now in limited release. Oh, <laughs> I bet, I bet, they, changed, I bet they changed the name, yeah, too. For yeah, sure. <laughs> Lucky he was facing that way. You would have had a, a pale ale colonic. Ooh. Oh, it is, uh, it really hits him. Yeah. Right in the old timey mustache. <laughs> Uh, does he have a mustache? I don't know. I just figured if he's brewing beer. But Poor guy couldn't unicycle for days. Wow. Uh, yeah, our IPA will knock you on your ass. Yeah. It, it, it looks like a Buster Keaton thing. It's, it's great. It does look like it's straight out of a movie. Probably, probably a great beer, I'm guessing. And what an elaborate setup, my gosh. Wow. Um, but it's Well, that's how they brew beer, Tom. I know, but I mean, it's just, they, just walking up, just innocently checking some valve, and then... <laughs> beer by Acme. <laughs> Uh, speaking of drinking, dubbed the Crooked House for its leaning walls and tilting foundation. There was a little crooked man and a little crooked house. An 18th century pub has been favored by many locals in the village of Himley in England. Mm. Uh, actually was, uh, has to, had to be bulldozed after a fire, but they've got to rebuild it. And they have to do it just as it was leaning before the fire. Oh, you know no what I'm kidding. To say? They're yes. going to rebuild it crookedly. Yes. Yeah, it's a great idea. Maybe put in the gas line wrong and <laughs> leave out the fire alarms, <laughs> the smoke detectors, and all the things that might have saved the building in the first it place. It was unlawfully bulldozed we after that. We grandfathered in the danger of living and going to this building. Mysterious <laughs> fire last year, and the owners have now been ordered to rebuild the quirky pub just as it was, loop-sided proportions and all. This incident became the subject of a criminal investigation. Oh. And though no one was ever charged... The South Staffordshire Council yes. has since ordered that the pub be rebuilt back to where it was prior to the fire. Yes. Apparently, it was very favored by <laughs> you those who lived in the town. Crooked yeah. 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 nation. Like yeah. some old mushy yeah. peas. <laughs> mushy, mushy peas mushy. and sticky toffee pudding. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Capital. 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 Brilliant. Kellogg CEO Gary Pilnick facing online backlash. Why? I like what he does. He's yeah. I'm Gary Pilnick. <laughs> he is sec he's suggesting that cash-strapped families eat cereal for dinner. During an interview with CNBC, Pilnick said, quote, the cereal category has always been quite affordable, and it tends to be a great destination when consumers are under pressure. We had, that's what I grew up in a cash trap family, and we had often cereal for dinner. The brand is also advertising cereal for dinner in a new ad campaign we featuring it. its cereal mascots. When CNBC host Carl Quintanella asked if the messaging could, quote, land the wrong way, oh, yeah. Pilnick replied, I think, it's, it, I think it's a little tone deaf. It's landing really well right now. What's that tone was deaf quote. about it? Yeah. I think he's saying, if you're poor, uh, have cereal. Sure. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I mean, all he's saying is what people have known forever. Right. Yeah. I, but you see, in, well, I'm, in my life, if I didn't want what my mom made... I had my choice of Rice Krispies or cornflakes. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I ate yeah. them virtually every night. Uh, I, I think your parents were nice people, but they did not raise you. They didn't do you any favors. No. They, <laughs> telling when, you uh, yes every, every Yeah, every yeah. Day well, if, if we didn't, Christy, you, well, you if, should keep all of your poop. If you didn't want to eat, think... if you didn't want to eat what your mom made, what'd you eat? You sat there until you ate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's exactly. You didn't what have we the did. cereal option. God, no. no. I mean, there were no oh, options. Not. No options. I think you were the exception to, mo to most. <laughs> Absolutely. Most you, people, it was you eat what we made. Yep. Yeah. We sat there until our plate, and it would because if I didn't eat, Josh. I'd be talking, and my parents were sick of hearing me. <laughs> His comments, along with the ad campaign, do not appear to be landing well with Social media users. Well, but then in, in his That's defense, fine. what does land well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not going to. Right. You could be. You could give all your money to the greatest charity in the world, and someone would be pissed on the. Yeah, they criticized Kellogg's for being insensitive, greedy, and tone deaf. 
I, I'm, oh, I'm with you, Josh. Everyone's known this forever. We've had I have cereal for dinner probably once or twice a month. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Just and and as thankfully, a choice. we're blessed not to be in a position where we, right. that, that's a necessity, but it's right. uh, certainly a fine option. Yes. I just said, I mean, you, the people weighing in against this guy, Tony the Tiger. That's not great. <laughs> oh, they're upset. Thanks, Tony. Uh, the hand that feeds you, you stupid tiger. <laughs> <laughs> now, it might be tone deaf in that I don't believe the Kellogg CEO is in a position to have to have cereal for dinner. Well, no. <laughs> and remember, uh, cornflakes were originally designed to... Keep you from masturbating. Cut down on masturbation. Yes. Mm. That's true. <laughs> and you know what? Also, a lot of people having cereal for dinner... They're not eat. They're not lucky enough to be eating Kellogg's. Well, that's true too. It's it's the bag. Uh, <laughs> it's the Kellogg's. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'd like mine with creme fraiche and caviar. <laughs> it's really corn, corn frakes. Yeah. Uh, so, so. Uh, going back one story, the guy that was knocked on his butt at the brewery. Yeah. You asked if he had a uh, had a mustache. Is that what you yeah, said? Does he have an old timey mustache? Oh, he has more than that, my friend. Oh, it's He's a got giant the full beard. beard. Yeah. Yeah, giant beard. If you Can get you some see? of those beers in your in your beer, <laughs> those, those hairs in your beer, you're going to know why. Wow. That's a hilarious video. Yeah. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk with uh, comedian Bill Burr. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. I feel like I'm watching the dating game. That's right. Mm -hmm. And here they are. From Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> he's an inveterate masturbator. <laughs> what? He's, uh, <laughs> he's trying to grow a beard. I think he's got a radio name. It's oh, it's Chuck Michaels. Michaels. Yeah. <laughs> good, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, wasn't this for okay. T berry gum or something? Didn't they use that? Uh, the T berry have... shuffle. Now right? was that uh, oh. was that indeed the dating game or? Oh, was, was that the newlywed the game? Oh, the lonely no, the lonely. It sounded like no, one of the them. I don't game? know. There is this it? Yeah, this is the dating game. And here yeah. they are. Yep. He's an obsessive compulsive from <laughs> Midwestern <laughs> United States. <laughs> He likes collecting things and telling people what to do. Putting Ladies and gentlemen, they love shiny objects. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just now... He's a member of the Black Panther Party. <laughs> and, I didn't, I didn't expect that one coming. Uh, <laughs> he didn't. And a confirmed bachelor. All right, now, here they are. He's fathered nine children. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> big round of applause for Tom Griswold. <laughs> where you come around the, the partition. Okay. Now, this we is where you go. Uh, bachelor number one. one uh, hey, if I... If no, I was I'm bachelorette greasy, number one. If I were a bush... <laughs> if I drop some food on the floor, how many seconds before you <laughs> eat it? <laughs> mm. It's literally just water. I, uh... Mouth it. Mouth it? Has that been throwing you guys off? Like, I've been told that when I drink out of bottles that I really, like, wrap my whole mouth around them or whatever. And I'll be honest, I have no idea what people are talking about. How we doing, fellas? Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. 
And if the Belgians don't like it, the fries of today are fundamentally Parisian, according to food historian Pierre Leclerc, Me, who said uh, in an Clerc. interview with the paper, which was published on International Belgian Friday, as if to add flame to the oil. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Palm frites. What is a pomme frites? A French fry. French fry. French fry. Oh. Yes, Ace, you have a question. Well, you know, Tom, the first French fries weren't fried in France. What? Huh. They were fried in Greece. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Boo>. Okay. <laughs> no, no. In Boo. Ace's defense, he's done that before, and none of you remembered. <laughs> no. No, I, I remember yeah. it. No, I don't. At least didn't. finally it made sense. <laughs> Fair amount of acting on air sometimes, Chick. <laughs> Words have different What's a duck fried in? What's a duck fried in? Turkey. Tur <laughs> what? Turducken. Turducken. That is even a joke. <laughs> he may be having a stroke. <laughs> it's as bad as that crap over there. Well, that is no. even a joke. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, what, is that is, what does a dirt? What? No, what does a duck fight in? No, it's a, a duck fried in. Oh, what is a He's duck fried, fried in Turkey? In? Yeah, turducken. They put that no, Jeff, there's nothing no, there, man. Not a joke. <laughs> you know what? There's the country turkey. That is not a joke in any language. Look, you know we what? need to... Can we box this I up? I am a professional comedian. <laughs> Let's send this to the Comedy Institute and see what they say. Hey, and Tom, do bite? Jeff a favor and don't tell the people where he's performing oh this weekend. God. Abide by their Listen, decision. I've burned through all my A material in here, all right? Already? You just got here 25 minutes ago. Oh, I gotta write some new stuff. <laughs>
a legend that's uh, more than a thousand years old. <laughs> Uh, I I I don't know about that part either. Yeah, but it's it's, okay. it's based on an old though. Okay, oh, really? and, and then it was it was. I <laughs> want to say whoa, whoa, okay. okay. <laughs> Evidence like that, how can I argue? With all the facts, it was it's um. What is the uh, there? Oh, I know what it is. Is is it Sadie Hawkins Day? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. kind of based on the same old legend. And that was what Al Cap what was that little was Abner. The, little Al Cap Abner. wrote the strip. Yeah. All I know is we had a Sadie Hawkins dance when I was in yeah, that's, high, junior high, it's, it's like ninth same, grade or the something. The same notion, but yeah, it, there were severe penalties if on leap day you said no. <laughs> uh, is that correct, Pat? You're of Irish heritage. You know all this. <laughs> I know all of this. Oh, yes. well, can, you, like, can you sing about it for? Us? Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some singing along would be nice. Here we go. Hey. Attention, ladies, here's some news about Leap Day. About Leap, Leap Day. Day. The Irish say it's the woman's turn to propose wa walls. So get yourself down on one knee and ask some dude, please marry me. Oh, I can't say no. Or a leprechaun does a speed bag on his balls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Don't you know he must say yes on Leap Day. On Leap Day. But looking at these women just gives me the creeps. You know why? Why? There's a fatty, fat, fat, and an uggo, too. A drunk redhead chick with pimples coming for you. And an Amazonian woman wanting to peg in. All really dead. All really They say marriage won't last long on leap day. On leap day. You'll catch the Irish flu and head for home, they all say. Oh, they're wrong, I know they are. Cause my Paula bought me a brand new guitar. <laughs> and I won't quit till I'm a star. And on the Bob and Tom show someday on Leap Day, on Leap Day. On Leap Day. Yeah. On Leap Day. On Leap Day. Keep that peg away. Peggy! <laughs> 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 or I'll leap a mile in the air on oh, leap day. It only happens on leap day. I thank you very much. You no. know, I told a girl that one time. I said, now we're going to play hide and seek. And I said, if you can find me, you can tag me. And she said, okay. And then I said, I'll be behind the couch. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. That's that good. Uh, now, here, here you go. I was looking up the tradition in many European countries. Any man who refuses a woman's proposal on February 29th has to buy her 12 pairs of gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least what? it makes sense. <laughs> That's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. yeah hmm. There's all kinds of uh, crazy stuff out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is an Irish thing. It's been on for a long time. So, uh, ladies? I have to admit, I'd never heard of the uh, whole Leap Day. I heard of the Sadie Hawkins angle. I've never heard of the Leap Day Irish thing. Yeah. It is fun. There you go. Uh, so uh, maybe some gal out there will hear about it this morning. And, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, do Could it. be your lucky day, guys. All right. Uh, if it meantime, is, let us know. Oh, Hello, God. is this Jake? <laughs> speaking of... <laughs> I <love> um, <laughs> Speaking of females, a new researcher out there says female psychopaths are more common than we think. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, really? No, no. They're more common than you, this person, thought. Everybody was surprised by that. Stand on their head, huh? While current scientific evidence suggests that male psychopaths outnumber females by around six to one. We're number one. <laughs> We're number one. Dr. Clive Bodie of Angela Ruskin University, Angela Ruskin, argues female psychopaths are more manipulative, use different techniques to create a good impression, and utilize deceit as well as sexually yeah. seductive behavior. Uh, again, you don't need psychopath in there. To no. gain an advantage as compared to male psychopaths. He estimates that the real ratio of male-female psycho psychopathy may be about 1.2 to 1, up to five times higher than previously suggested. 
So what happens? Well, okay. Yeah, cause... I, uh, because breasts hide those traits <laughs> oh. from men, you see. <laughs> oh, they're so focused oh. on yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Blinded by the Interesting. What, what do we got? Uh, Blinded by, by the, the breasts. Eileen <laughs> Wernos, right? And that's, sure. That's just oh. about it. Well, you got your... Lizzie Borden, your uh, uh, well, well, but are you talking serial killer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Lizzie. Not all psychopaths are killers. Two. Well, right. Well, they mean, can kill your soul. They don't necessarily yeah, kill well, your body. Of all people, we're telling you this. <laughs> oh, I, I'm well aware. <laughs> Sorry. Hell hath no fury. Hmm? Yeah. Lady like scorn. A lady, because she's a psychopath. Oh. Is the old saying. <laughs> here she comes. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Christy, what's the most uh, quote unquote psycho thing you've ever done? I'll answer that. She threw a coffee table. I did uh, throw a coffee table. You once. cut up clothes. I did not cut up clothes. I, I threw them outside out the in window? the rain. I you didn't burn them. I don't. No, I just threw them outside. You know, in these the rain. probably aren't fair because I, I bet all those were justified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're both cheating. Yes. Well, oh come on. Yeah. Then it totally oh, come then justified. On. You're right, Christy. Yeah. Those I, I that was when I was in my twenties, way back. Ace was around my psychopath days. I'm, I'm not like that at all now. Yeah, I don't think you were. I put a psycho. hole in the wall. I was just angry. Time. First marriage put a hole in the wall. Did you really? Oh yeah. Did you miss her by that much? No, I missed the stud <laughs> by that much. Oh. I was very lucky. Was that her boyfriend? Oh, the stud <laughs> in the wall. Yeah. How my definition. Was, how big was that cash? How <laughs> bigger in the wall? <laughs> Have you ever gotten angry like that, Josh? Uh, not in a. Uh, I have, but I've never punched anything okay. uh, it, with an ang uh, angry at a woman. I've punched. At my, have you thrown a clothes? I threw out my brother the through a wall ah, uh, oh. or into a wall one time, okay. and he went halfway through. Nice, yeah, good throw. Did you have you ever thrown some clothes outside or anything like that? I have. I've had that done to me. Have I've, you? I've had oh, clothes yeah. thrown away. Uh, I, your okay, book, your books. Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guitars on the lawn. Yeah, uh, guitars geez. on the lawn. Yeah. But in her yeah. defense, it was. Pr I, I tried to kill her. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, I, I still remember what it felt like with my hands around her. Oh, hey, hey, now, hey. Right now, I want to urge you to uh, do a little shopping okay. and buy something that's going to help your life and the lives of everyone around you. I'm, of course, talking about those Raycon earbuds. That's right. Buy a pair for someone you uh, like a lot and buy a pair for someone you should like a lot yourself. That's right. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds, they have the optimized gel tips that fit every ear ever made. You're walking the dog. Dance into your favorite tunes. The Raycon earbuds stay in your ears. With eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and you get amazing quality audio at about half the price of other premium audio brands. Awesome features like noise isolation, three customizable sound profiles, and thousands and thousands of five-star reviews for Raycon earbuds. Plus, of course... Don't worry, we have a deal for you. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom to get 15% off your Raycon order, plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom to score 15% off and free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Love those Raycon headphones, love those Raycon earbuds. Coming back, I think we're going to talk with Bill Burr. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with this? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me, is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. 
That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Here at the Bob and Tom Radio Laboratories, we've discovered that if you listen to the Bob and Tom Radio Show in the morning, you're going to be all right. However, if you don't listen, there could be some serious side effects, including general discomfort, memory loss, head spins, confusion, memory loss, itch. Bob and Tom Mornings on 104.7 WTUE. Confusion, confusion, itching, itching, bloating, bloating. Ah! Joe DeRosa is sitting in with us right now, Joe. Uh, what else What else is going on in your life? Uh, what, what about your personal background? Big family, small background, uh, a small family? What? Uh... Uh, I'm in a relatively small family that I was adopted mm -hmm. ah. into. Uh -huh. Yes. Interesting. And I know what... You were adopted into the DeRosa family? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. And I know what everybody is wondering, because mm. I always, you know... Did you ever look for your... Did you ever look for your real parents? Yeah. That's what everybody wants to know. Did you ever... I saw a little Maury. Did you ever try to find your real parents? Uh, no. I pretty much took the hint, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, when they right. abandoned me, uh, I was like, yeah. that's, that's probably, that's the end of that. Probably, no. No, no yeah. sense in looking for him. Really. Uh, I got you. Okay. Uh -huh. really. uh -huh. I'm sure there's a lot of Dropping gold. Dropping a dime on a mom and dad. A lot of gold comedy down this yeah. road. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now I have a very, like... My mother was very overprotective through my whole life, and mm -hmm. but uh, she's uh, she's very involved in my life, and she uh, she calls me almost every day, every day, and holds me hostage on the phone for hours on end. <laughs> while she she just she's at this age where she just holds me on the phone and just asks me all these really annoying questions, and she won't let me hang up, and mm -hmm. it it just sounds like I'm having really bad phone sex for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> just like Ugh, yes. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I already told you what I was wearing. I wouldn't even give it a C because it's effing A. <laughs> In Effingham, Illinois, it's the Effing House Family Restaurant. You'll have an effing good time. <laughs> hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. We're talking about um, those encounters that you have and... What uh, things are spoken? We've heard, for example, this morning, Jake, you want to review a couple of things? Um, choke me, you dirty bastard. I'm going to be going like a freight train. Uh, the other one woman screeched like an owl. <laughs> uh, Go to line one. Okay. Morning, Bob and Tom show. Hello. Hi, who's this? This is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Hi. Uh, what have you heard or said, Jenny? What have I heard? I've heard, uh, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do that again, Jenny? That made my morning. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what, what I'm, I'm talking, talking about. about. I need that yep. isolated for my sports intro. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That is so funny. Do it again. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, let's say, Jenny... Jim, we mentioned that you are a tall man. Yes. Six, 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 huh? six. Are you uh, a single guy or married guy? I just got married. Oh, congratulations. Yes. How's, how's that I'm going? First timer? Yeah, first timer. Wow. Yeah. I'm, How about uh, that? I'm learning, you know, very slowly. I'm learning, you know, uh, like, you know, when uh, women get married, they take the guy's name, and I'm learning that us guys are also giving my, my married name is somebody. Somebody's got to take the trash out. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was like, is she talking to somebody else? Is there somebody else here? Somebody. Shouldn't we be on a first name basis by now? <laughs> well, someone's going to have to go to the hardware store. <laughs> somebody's going to have to put this table together. Uh, Bob and Tom. Oh. <laughs> 
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. The guy with the big feet is Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. How are you? Check, check, check. Sure. We had a cool Bigfoot story yesterday. Not about Bigfoot the critter. No, we had it about, uh, about guy a, needing about shoes. About a, a kid that has a size 23 and a half shoe, and right. Shaq has uh, provided Stepped some up. shoes and some uh, stuff for him. Yeah, and some money mm-hmm. and some clothes and all oh, sorts of stuff. Gigantic feet. Yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, going to be hard to live with. Chick, how come some feet can smell and some noses can run? Your thoughts? I think uh, in that case, possibly that person's upside down. Oh, mm. oh I think we need, that, that, America. I think we need a palate cleanser <laughs> after that turd. Chick, you leave a man on a plane, and he flies for that day. You throw a man out of a plane, he flies for the rest of his life. <laughs> that was Ace Cosby's oh. Yeah. That was that is, as short as it is, it is for the rest of his uh, life. Yeah, that's, oh. that's, that's a truism. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. there a famous photograph somebody took that actually caught a guy falling out of the plane? It what? Was, uh, yeah, it was a stowaway up under a well, uh, the wheel well on the plane, and he just yeah. happened to be taking a picture of the plane, and the guy's falling out of it. Mm. Yeah. It won a Pulitzer Prize or something. That's not I mean, a good way to go. But yeah. I don't know. The guy was saying, "Wee." There's video out there of a guy. He was so he was so concerned <laughs> with getting his GoPro right on his helmet and stuff, uh. and uh, they all jumped out of the plane. And he was so concerned with the camera that it, as soon as he jumped, he realized he didn't put a shoot on. <gasps> and there, you can watch that footage. <laughs> they have really. Did, they the, have did a- the GoPro land with them? I mean, it survived, so you get to see. Yeah, you land can see the jump. Yeah, you can. The- yeah. They have like a website. I'm, I'm sure there's more than you know a bunch of them with uh, last pictures taken. Things. Like oh that. yeah, like the guy on cool. top of the uh, radio tower. Oh yeah. The, oh jeez. Selfie stick sticking way. Don't out. climb those. No. Yeah. Couldn't the guys with the parachutes catch him? No, I, 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 I nobody realized it until he he went oh. to pull the chute, yeah. and it wasn't there. Hey, hey, guys. <laughs> you suppose you did that thing you do with your wallet? Where yeah. You, where you reach back and you go, wait a minute, no, no, wait, I I'm going to check again. Uh, oh, God. Oh, boy. That's got to be a I bummer. saw, and hadn't that no guy joke. done a thousand jumps or something? He was quite experienced. Yes, right? yeah. How do you, um, I bet that didn't, I bet that uh, possible uh, a cause for that, because he was so right. used to jumping out of a right. plane. He took everything for granted. Uh, you're halfway down. You go to pull your chute. It's not there. How do you decide that you're going to? Die? Land. Do you do you go, well, I'm going to try to land on my feet and survive, or do you go, I'm going head first so this is quick? Land on your feet? Your I, legs would go... I'm just saying. Somewhere. I'm just saying. I, what do, how do you decide? Uh, yeah, I think you kind of look for a pool. I think you... Right. <laughs> Isn't there... Uh, I don't think... Yeah, can you you pass I mean, do you try to get yourself straight and, like, the no. point break your way towards a body right? of water? The so highest someone fell from and lived was like a stewardess on a plane like 30,000 feet or something 30,000 she no. she uh, it's like one of those through, old time life went through uh, trees and stuff and landed in a bog or something yeah, yeah. I, she I'm, somehow survived somehow she yeah, survived I, think it, I, know, I think there was a bog involved there was a bog yeah uh, you'd bog. have to have a bog yeah. could, I mean do you could decide could to look at the, to, go, to fall back first and watch the sky or do you want to see the ground coming no I want to lay on you my you don't back. have time I don't know. I think time. you got a good minute at least. No, you might you pass out. Some time. Yeah. Oh, you'd have plenty of time to realize what's what happening. Going and on. the whole thing yeah. about how you'll die from a heart attack has been debunked. Right. That's that oh. doesn't actually happen. Right. That's so okay, weird. I think yeah. it's this Bill joining us. Uh, we're getting. I'm getting a. Uh, it looks like a countdown. Oh, I hope so. Over that way, we're looking Sorry. to talk with. There Bill. he is. There is the very handsome Bill Burr. Hey, Bill. Good morning, sir. Hey. What's up, fellas? Oh, we're just uh, talking about some poor guy that jumped out of an airplane and <laughs> realized he didn't have a parachute. Yeah. yeah. Um, Talk about a day. It's not a joke. Uh, it's a true yeah, story. His GoPro so. was all set, but he forgot That's to. That's like when you leave your coffee on top of the car. <laughs> yeah. 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 A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, 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 Bill Burr is on tour. Uh, he's also all over Netflix with Old Dads and live at Red Rocks. Oh, that's a good one. I, 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 I was listening to an interview with... Um, uh, one of the guys from REO, and he was saying that in your lifetime, everyone should go see something at Red Rocks. It's the most beautiful venue in America. Uh, what are your thoughts on doing comedy at Red Rocks? Oh, it was uh, it was surreal. It's sort of you feel like you're at like Woodstock or something. Um, there's definitely a uh, you know what it is when you go there. Not only is it beautiful. And you're excited. The crowd is excited. Like, they're excited to see something there. The performers are excited to perform. So there's, like, crazy uh, energy being passed 
to both people. One of my favorite things about this special is the, uh, you know, we really mic'd up the crowd. So there's a lot of just, random <laughs> yelling and stuff in the special. Like, I'll say, like, something like the dumbest thing ever. And there'll just be some guy in the crowd like, yeah! Like, he agrees. <laughs> I just got such a kick out of that as far as, like, the just amount of misinformation and the people living in their own media universes. Like, there's just every opinion out there. Um, so it's I mean, like the internet has really proved to us that we are too dumb to talk to one another. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Whether the earth was yeah. round or flat, was yeah. that debate was over when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Burr is our guest. Did you shoot just one night there, or did you, were you able to do more than one so you had, had, didn't have to do retakes? Um, we did two, but it was weird. We did one, and then we came back like a week or so later. Usually, you know, you do two in one night, or, you know, you do one one night, one the other night, but we... Came back like two weeks later, which I think would have been weird in a lot of different places. But that place, I, it's kind of indescribable how excited and humbled you are to uh, to be there. I mean, that's right up there with any place that I've done. I did the Acropolis, the theater at the Acropolis in Greece recently. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, first stand-up to do it. And it was amazing. But I'll tell you what was funny, though, was Woody Allen and his band was that were there like two days earlier. <laughs> oh, really? Last I checked, he was, he is a stand-up comedian, but he was playing the clarinet. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is weird. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, and you're on tour playing some of the big rooms. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Now, when people come to see you now, are they going to see any of the stuff they might have seen in the Red Rocks show? No, none of it. You can't. That's what stand-up is. It's not like you can't go out there and play Freebird every time you come through. Nobody wants to see you again. Yeah, d um, d oh, joke d d has to be a surprise, yeah, you know? Do people shout out stuff, though, in the audience going, hey, do that one again? Um, no, they usually, if I say something dumb enough, they usually, and they take the bait, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have been teasing, you know, you just set them up. Talking about how you really want to see a woman president. And then women would be like, yeah, all right. And they'd be like, so you can debunk the myth that a woman president would actually make a difference. You just do stuff like that. Right, right. You had them cheering for... <laughs> yeah, like she wouldn't be bought and paid for and part of the war machine, too. No, not her. Um, just stuff like that. Yeah, no. are, are, are you still um, a pilot? Are you still flying the helicopter? Yes, I am. I'm having a great time. I actually, there was a heli helicopter expo out here in uh, L.A., and I got to go down. I flew a uh, an A-Star and an EC-130, uh, which were just incredible. I fly like a little two-seater egg beater, so kind of stinks to have to go back to that today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you ever, you're probably not old enough to remember the TV show Whirly Birds? <laughs> No, actually, it was directed by Robert Altman. Is is its claim to fame? Yeah, no, it really it wasn't it, bad. It was yeah. it was what a like mid sixties. I don't remember um, that. Are there what other TV shows prominently feature copters? What do you these mean, days? Airwolf? What these days, Airwolf? I don't know. Yeah, would would that be a possible? Which, by the way, all these years, people claiming that Hitler went to Brazil and hid. He didn't. He went to Hawaii. And when the heat blew over, he went and he played Higgins on uh, Magnum P.I. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same guy. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's certainly good to know. Uh, yeah, he just changed his mustache, but it's the exact same haircut. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Bill Burr is our guest, and uh, Bill is uh, a number of uh, amazing things on Netflix right now, including the movie Old Dads. We were talking about a, a news story today, Bill, in which uh, the guy from Kellogg's was uh, urging poor people to eat cereal for dinner and it, it was a little bit tone deaf but when i was a kid if i didn't want what my mom had i would have either cornflakes or rice krispies uh as as a parent what are your thoughts on that uh, if the kids don't eat what you've got for dinner do they starve what do you do yeah i don't i no i uh i work around it i'm overcompensating for my childhood but how mine worked is what if you didn't eat it for dinner my mother just wrapped like it in like 
that clear cellophane stuck it in the fridge and you just picked up where you left off in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I had like pork chops, cube steaks for breakfast, green bean casserole. And you'd just be sitting there and everybody else would, you know, either be having cereal or Sunday morning if there was like Sunday breakfast, they'd have like pancakes or waffles and you would just sit there. <laughs> the half-eaten chicken cutlet, it was the worst. Spaghetti. Spaghetti was awful too. The, the pasta was fine. It was the sauce. It was just so acidic on your little stomach in the morning. <laughs> now, uh, were you a cereal guy uh, when possible? Did you? What was your What was your go to uh, breakfast cereal? Oh, that was the weird thing because my parents wouldn't let us have like soda or you guys call it pop out there. They wouldn't let us have any of that or candy. But they like cereal. You could have whatever you want. So <laughs> we had all those little monster cereals. You know, Count Chocula, sure. Blueberry, Frankenberry, <laughs> oh, yeah. Cocoa Crisp. Uh huh. Like we we ate really bad ones, really bad ones. Now, as, as, an, as, as, as an adult, Jacks, it was just all color and cereal. We went out the door like Tony Montana. <laughs> now, as, as an adult, Bill Bird, do you um, are you doing like grape nuts and shredded wheat, or are you still doing the Count Chocula, or are you strictly a non-cereal guy? Grape nuts, eat them on your back porch in your robe, like the guy in the commercial. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had those in forever. Yeah, um, I, I love. I had grape nuts. This morning, I love them. They're fantastic. I'm also. I have a. Uh, I have like soft cooked egg. Oh. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. And are, are you a good cook? A little soft cooked egg machine. You make like two of them, and then you put a. Uh, you know, like one piece of toast. Now I'm definitely at that age. If uh, you know, I can destroy a week at the gym <laughs> with like one bad meal. It's the worst. <laughs> wow. Uh, now, um, uh, you've been in a commercial or two. Have you been approached for any uh, particular products where you just said, I can't do this? I've actually never done a commercial. I just, what was that? You know, early on in my career, I did a, I did a uh, commercial for a, uh, a ski resort. But <laughs> after that, yeah, I come from that old school generation where it's like, if you do a commercial, you're selling out, man. Because <laughs> everybody's doing it. Oh, I thought you had a um, I thought you had a cameo in one recently. What am I thinking of that you that you showed up in? Maybe it was some TV probably show. Probably Ron Howard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gingers all look alike. Now, when you uh, when you're playing the big rooms, I, I know that you're playing a bunch of big rooms. Is is it any different? Do you do you prowl the stage more? Do you have to do anything different, or is it just good old stand up like you did it back in the small clubs? You know, it used to be different, but somewhere along the line, like 20 years ago, I did some um, opening for somebody, and it was it was really weird as far as, like, the sound going out and then a delay coming back, almost like an old uh, self um, um, long-distance call. But now they have this sound down so well with the big screens and all that. It's just like doing a comedy club. It's just... It's like a giant comedy club is the only way uh, to describe it. When I did Fenway Park, it was like that. It was incredible. Man. That had to be great. <laughs> it had to be just amazing to go back to a place where you'd grown up. Yeah, no, that was... Um, I felt like uh, I was in a Led Zeppelin movie or something like that. And, uh, you know, it was funny. A lot of people go... Well, the advice I kept getting from people was just like, you know, make sure you take it in. Just make, when you go up there, just make sure you take, and I would be like, I can't do that. I'm doing stand-up comedy. I can't sit there and like look around. I'm immediately bombing. So you got to more like reflect on it afterward. Yeah. You know, it was funny. It was my agent booked me in Toronto like the next day. So I didn't even get a chance to do a victory lap. I couldn't even, I didn't get like one high five and a Dunkin' Donuts. It was just, uh, <laughs> I did it. I smoked a cigar in right field. And then the next morning I was at the airport you know, no liquids. Please remove your laptop. <laughs> Did that even happen? <laughs> Have you ever um, helicoptered into a gig on your own copter? Yeah, but I always do that with an instructor. I don't like flying at night. It's just, uh, you know, too many. Uh, and then also, like, the places that I've done it, um, I was down near San Diego, and it was just one of those things that when it was... The sun was out. It was easy to get into. But on the way out, there was just too many, like, mountains and wires and stuff. So we ended up landing at a nearby airport and still had, like, a, you know, a 40-minute Uber ride. So that kind of took away some of the uh, 
cool coolness of flying there. But I've done it. I've flown to like Vegas and stuff like that. But I rent other people's helicopters when I do it because, you know, the one that I fly, you know, if I have a headwind, it's going to take me three days to get there. <laughs> so what, I, I, what other comics? I know that I, I think John Travolta, the great actor, is, a, is a, a very fine pilot. Any other comedians, pilots that you know of? Oh, yeah. Um, Jeff Dunham builds and flies his own helicopters. I mean, that, that guy is... Uh, wow. Whoa. Oh, no, that guy is is next. I saw this thing on him, like, four or five years ago, and it was like, he's like a scientist, a mechanic, and a comedian. Like, he's an unbelievably intelligent human being. Like, they, they did this whole thing where I never thought about this, that if you were a ventriloquist, if you went to a store and you bought the puppet and then got famous... <coughs> using the puppet that you bought at the store, the corporation that built the puppet can sue you and take a percentage of your, your gig money. So this is like 10 years ago I watched this. He had like a 3D printer yeah, and this oven that looked like a, like, a, like a wall safe. And he would, by hand, he would draw these amazing... He could just draw the puppets himself, put it into a computer, have the printout, and then they, they would like make it, he would bake it in this oven... It was unreal. I was just going, like, this guy is like a... <laughs> Like he's a CIA too. He was really impressive. Yeah, we just talked to him a couple weeks ago. I didn't know he was a pilot. Though. I didn't either. That's so great, though. I think a lot of people assume that comedians, uh, in, in general, don't have the uh, the the smarts or the 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 focus to be something as serious as a pilot. I mean, piloting a helicopter is serious business. Uh, let me ask you this: No, there's a lot of uh, Kenny G's a pilot. Yep. Kenny G's an amazing pilot. Um, mm, wow. I'm going blank right now. I know there's a bunch of people flying, yeah, a lot of actors fly and stuff yeah, like that. You know, looking back, I wish I, I got a license to fly an airplane because helicopters fly so slow, and uh, it really changes your world You're a, when you can just, you know, have a license, rent a plane, and just fly yourself to a gig. Is uh, is is. is it's, it's, I, it's, Would it be unless you do it? It's it's uh, indescribable. Like when we went to that. That expo thing I was talking about down in Orange County. Uh -huh. I mean, we would have been there in like an hour and a half of traffic. We just went, took off. We were there in ten minutes. Yikes! Yeah, no, I know. The guy from Iron Maiden is a uh, is a certified Dickinson, jet. There you go. Yeah. There's a good one. Jet jet. Pilot. And the whole band is in the back. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you they're not listening to Skinner. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not going to argue with him too. Hey, hey you sucked last night. Really? <laughs> okay. Bill Burr is our yeah. guest. Bill is on tour, and uh, you can uh, check him out in uh, many many places all across the U.S. Indy, Detroit. Uh, Phoenix, a whole bunch of shows in Phoenix, Hollywood, California, Columbus, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, and, of course, all over Netflix, the movie Old Dads, and, of course, live at Red Rocks. Bill, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to say hi again. We certainly appreciate it. Absolutely. Oh, Les Claypool. There's another guy. Oh, yeah. There's another really? pilot. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God, that guy's right, so Bye. Funny. Jeez. Yeah, I forgot about Les. Yeah, that's um, it's so interesting. And I did not know that Jeff Dunham was a pilot. I knew he was a super smart guy, and I knew that he made his own puppets. Yeah. Well, That's... but he he does, but he is not the pilot. Walter is the pilot. Oh man! Oh. And you don't want to get him on a, a bad. No. Day, oh, you though. can imagine that gig though. I mean, it, it, he's doing that, and then someone comes up to the front, and he's he takes his hands off everything, and has that puppet sitting there. <laughs> oh, look, look, my, Walter's flying it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's real funny. Uh well, uh, now I turn this way, then I turn that way. And I say, you know something? What? We've learned a lot today. We've learned a bunch of interesting things. And one of the things that we've learned is, you know when you, uh, sometimes you go and you get a fast food hamburger and then you take that tomato and go, boy, this tastes like styrofoam. And you find out, yeah, there's real tomatoes. Aren't they great? We've learned that we've been eating cheese all wrong, that there's real cheese that is so much better than the junk you've been eating. What am I talking about, Josh? Well, Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese and Sausage were kind enough to uh, join us and, and teach us a little bit more about better cheese. They have that 
uh, squeaky cheese, those squeaky cheese curds, rather, that are made fresh in the morning, most often delivered to your doorstep in about 48 hours nationwide. And right now, they're celebrating leap year like the rest of us. Leap day, sharp cheddar sale is here. Buy one sharp cheddar, get the next one 40% off. You can get the 8-year-old, the 13-year-old, and that 17-year-old sharp cheddar. Boy, that's bold stuff and so tasty. Enjoy it any time after a long day. Serve it to your guests, your family, or even just yourself with a nice glass of wine or a cold bottle of beer. The Sharp Cheddar Sale going on now through March 5th. Don't miss out. It's a great way to try all those Sharp Cheddars Gardeners has. This is a great time to stock up, too. I know I'm going to stock up on the 8-year-old. That's my personal favorite. Buy one Sharp Cheddar, get the next one 40% off. You can do this at GardenersWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. And check out that Bob and Tom sampler package. It's the perfect intro to all of Gardner's most beloved products. The 8-year-old Super Sharp Cheddar, that bacon oven baked cheese, buffalo wing cheese, teriyaki meat sticks, garlic summer sausage, and so much more. Try them out. You're really going to find... That there's a big difference between what Tom was talking about, some of that crappy cheese out there, and Gardner's wonderful stuff. Right now, receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at Gardner'sWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. Give them a try, and then message us. Let us know what you thought. That's Gardner'sWisconsinCheese.com slash Bob and Tom. Oh, thank you very much. We're coming right back with our history lesson. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on... Hi, he's Bob. I'm Bob. And he's Tom. And I'm Tom. <laughs> to conquer and win, we're gonna be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, Q95 with Luciano Gaspacho in praise of the Indianapolis Colts. In a great praise. Phenomenal. Here's to a big Super Bowl win this next and, year. Uh, we hope that you get to sing the national anthem at the Indy 500 next year, Luciano. Big a star like me, how are they going to refuse? Bob, a lot of celebrities were in town for mm -hmm. the Indianapolis 500, which of course took place yesterday, including a guy from the National Association of Broadcasters who has honored us by stopping by our show this morning. Of course, I'm talking about Mr. Ralph Bonarama. Hey, guys. I just want to let you know that uh, I really respect what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a shame that more kids can't go watch your show. I oh, that. it's on radio. Well, never mind, man. Let me wonder about the uh, Hoosier Dome, they call it. Now, when the Colts moved here, they were considering changing their names to the Trojans, and we were going to rename this place the Condome. This guy walks into a psychiatrist. Yeah. He says, I, I feel like I'm a dog. Really? Yeah. You know, the psychiatrist says, how long have you felt this way? He says, ever since I was a puppy. <laughs> Go by. All right, it's it's a helium money, so we should do this properly. Okay. You ready to sing along with it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that feels good. Here we go. It's helium Monday. That's right. The high point of your week's arrive. It's helium Monday with Bob and Tom. That's us, Bob and Tom. And uh, by golly. Is it by, by God, you can listen to In My Not. <laughs> you can. K-I-Z-Z-F-M. Kiz. Kiz. <laughs> Lucky that doesn't start with a J. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> That'll be one hell of a radio Stop station. it! Stop it! We'll be coming right back. <laughs> it's new wax off. <laughs> Remove old wax and give your car a high gloss shine with wax off. Just jerk off the top and spray a <laughs> smidgen on your vehicle and apply it with vigorous up and down motions. Uh -huh. uh, Dr. Ruth, he kept undressing me with his eyes. Uh -huh. Dr. Ruth, can I get pregnant when a man undresses me with his eyes? Uh -huh. Only if he's cockeyed. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Yeah. 
put a little extra menthol there on your cigarette. It's like, oh, oh yeah. Mm, yeah. Haji, put that shaving foam down. <laughs> Haji, would you like to give your street address? Maybe that'll help, help some people contact you after seeing this tape. Yeah, Dick. But uh, the type of people that'll be contacting you are medical experimenters, okay? Dick. I wonder if they replace his heart with a gallstone, if his body will still work. <laughs> this portion of our show is uh, brought to you by Walenda Brothers Coffee. Good to the last drop. <laughs> new law firm in the news today. Really? Yeah, three famous uh, attorneys have formed a new law firm. Oh, really? Who are yeah, they? Uh, Gary Hart, Ted Kennedy, and uh, Richard Nixon. What's it called? It's called Dick'em, Dunk'em, and Cheat'em. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't make fun of Gary Hart anymore. Why? The guy, I mean, he was... He was six inches away of becoming president, you know what I mean? <laughs> Keep it in your pants, Jimmy. Get on your knees and pray. And when you get a Woody, when you get home and take it. <laughs> <laughs> So why do they have one of the main thoroughfares for people and that's say, why don't they build a little uh, a tunnel, tunnel or a bridge? Hey, what a great idea. Guy from, Ooh, guy from USAC goes, <laughs> golly, Earl, that might be a pretty good idea. <laughs>
Here we go. On, on, on the 29th of February, is uh, allowed to ask Amanda to marry marry her. And if, and, and if he doesn't, there's some kind of penalty. Okay. I think Apparently, it's, a, it's a, a, a pegging and what is it, handcuff? Oh, what is something like, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they're always me. trying oh, to scare me like we, we were talking about... Uh, <laughs> Bill Burr's uh, comedy special that he filmed at Red Rocks. Red Rocks is... Um, a beautiful spot. It's uh, in Denver. Uh, Denver it, proper, yeah, in that uh, area. He's walking us through it. Just, I'm, I'm about to read a letter it. that means something to me. He's going to walk It'll mean nothing. <laughs> it'll, it'll mean... It'll That's mean, the truest thing. It'll, it'll, mean, <laughs> it'll mean nothing to you because... This, it'll mean nothing to you because... I know, because I'm beyond stupid. I get it. I know. Oh, it's not stupid. It's ignorant. Uh, okay. There's a distinction. No, no, go ahead. No, this is a matter of taste. This this will not... Oh, I don't have that. I don't have none of that either. This this won't be up your alley. I ain't your got alley. none of that. Okay, go ahead. Because there's no assisted coach. Oh. Uh, uh, dear Tom. Boy, that took a long time. A 30-year listener. I heard you mention Red Rocks a couple times recently. I wanted to share my experience. Oh, my please. dad took me to my very first concert in 1983 at yeah, Red terrific. Rocks. Yeah. Get ready. Get ready. Okay. Eric Clapton with Alvin Lee. Who's Alvin Lee? Ten years after. Ten years after. Oh. The guy can play Why the would drum. anyone know that? No, I don't know. That's yeah, why no, I'm asking. I think anyone who's uh, even slightly familiar with the music scene would go know. over any of his uh, political beliefs. I, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> Michael, thank you for taking the time to write the letter. I appreciate it. Next time, don't. Obviously, the <laughs> the ignorati in the room don't get it. Okay, first of all, love that. Okay, now um, I appreciate that. God, that had to be amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, here's something for Tom. I think. Don't even get. <laughs> you don't even get all of ten years after. You get the one. One guy from him. <laughs> what, that, what do they do? Play I'd that like one hit I over and over. The world. Yeah. yeah, that's a good song, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, they, I, uh, no, no, it's absolutely it. in the yeah. movie Woodstock. Yeah, I've seen it. Remember that? I'm going home. See my baby. Going home. See my baby. That's the whole. Oh, thing. I did kind of like and he's, that. And he, mm. he's, he plays lightning fast. I know. Which usually is not my cup of tea, but. Uh, He's, that was, Damn it, you're right. I did, I did like you know, the Yes, that would have been a great I was just going to say that. The way he retold that, I love it. Uh, <laughs> ten years after ago. It's amazing. You know, Thank I smell you, something. Oh, it must, be, you smell? it must be your personality. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've been told that before. Uh, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's, I've wondered that for a long time. February 29th. Oh, hey, history. History. I haven't looked. Let me Didn't look. Ben Franklin do anything? Or... Uh, oh, this February is cool. February 29th. Got to be a lot of cool things. Not, in, in no particular it's order. Sleep year. Uh, 1960, the first Playboy Club opened in Chicago. Oh. And if you think Hooters is degrading, <laughs> uh, they don't have to wear bunny ears. Um, isn't there still one in... Isn't that one left somewhere in Europe was, or something? There was one in East Lansing. I yeah, there was one in... Oh. Ace and I have been there. Right? Yeah. Uh, Michigan? But I think yeah. there's one in uh, <laughs> Dubai or something. Oh, that makes sense. I'm, I'm, Dubai? I, I, yeah, Wait think, a minute. It does kind of make sense. But they're not even allowed to... Well, well, naked. well they're executed after each shift. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, bet they're, I bet their HR department is many and varied. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The Grammy Awards, always 10 years behind. In 68, they finally gave the Beatles a Grammy for Sgt. Pepper's. Thank God they got that. Okay, okay very good, very good. Yeah. Um, this is obscure. <laughs> In 1980, Buddy Holly's glasses... <laughs> that been, that, that, were found shattered in the were field. Returned by uh, Ron Goldman. <laughs> were, <laughs> were found in Mason City, Iowa. What? Yeah, yeah. you know why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's somebody what found him in a field. <laughs> it flew off his head. Really? Oh well, where do you think they came How from? How did they know they were his? Why wow. would it be? Because he had Buddy Holly on his name on his glasses. Okay, sorry. And um, everything. He had happy his, birthday to. Oh, this is a good one. Name in his underwear. Giacchino Rossini, of course, the composer of. The Barber of Seville. <laughs> my favorite Bugs Bunny opera. The <laughs> yes. Barber of Seville. Leopold. Leopold. Um, Leopold. Yeah, da, da, da. So this is yeah, da, 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 Tony Robbins, uh, born in this date, uh, 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 interestingly enough, on the 29th. He's the guy that people uh, pay to convince them to walk on hot charcoal instead of grilling out like they should. <laughs> but I'm just saying. He's also <laughs> responsible for Shallow Howl, Needs a Gal. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> ja Rule. Yes. Yeah. Isn't he the guy that was responsible for that big debacle where the people paid all that money yeah, for the concert that, that never happened? He's some I don't know if he was. I don't know if he was. I haven't looked at it. Uh, the, the fire fest. What was it called? Uh, oh, and then in 1692, the first people are accused of witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, it's about time. Okay. When's the last time you saw a witch? 
Yeah, they do kind of take care of them, didn't See, they? It worked. <laughs> can't, argue, can't argue with success like the death penalty. Well, that guy will never kill again. He's toast. Things we learned today on the show. Christy yes. killed a leopard and has the scarf to prove it, as you oh, can see. Oh, yeah, there. of course. Mm -hmm. Tom's daughters went to a camp somewhere and killed a squirrel and skinned it and made They didn't kill the squirrel. The squirrel was already the dead. They were learning how to tanning hide. They were learning about the importance of hunting and, her, and culling the herd. Jeez. I can't even fathom can't that. Girls are going I to can't. Lord of the Flies summer we, camp. We Knowing to. you and your significant Makes other, sense. I just cannot We've got to fathom this. figure this out tomorrow. There's no way that children <laughs> and this all is where over they, the country they, they learn to whittle. I, I bought the they really nice. To whittle. I bought some really nice knives for them. <laughs> And, yeah, and the first nice. day we had it, one of their friends had to go to the hospital to get 12 stitches. Oh. <laughs> In her hand. Well, it doesn't... <laughs> it wasn't her face. <laughs> I can't help with the kids are spaz. Oh. Okay, spaz. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.